Um, let's get rid of that. Goodbye. Yeah. I think that's it. Raymond, can you hear me now? Raymond, can you hear me? Ah, Raymond's my sound man. Can you hear me, Raymond? Ah. Nothing like water, you know? That stays consistent. I'm going to drink some yerba mate, too, if I can. Yeah, I can reach that. R drink some yerba mate, but um, water, right, folks? Let's start with water. And um, how are you today? We, we're, we're about 10 minutes. We're going to have some guests here. And we a uh, nice cathedral delay. Let me turn that down. Uh, thank you. It's Frank Bellina. Who, who should know? Let's, let's back that off. Is that better? Is that, is that a little more dry? Hey. Hey. Yeah. Is that better? Um, <laughs> Tommy, can you hear me? Very good, very good. Benjamin Davis is here. Benjamin Davis is one of my fun guests today. We got a couple cool things to talk about today, but one of them is uh, a bunch of bass players. Um, that's right. What did I say? What did, what did you say in this comment, Scott? I should have said a bunch. Actually, I should have said, I should have said a few, right? You said a few. I should have said a few that covers it but um it's more than a couple yes and uh it's somewhere under a bunch or a gaggle what do you call a group of bass players uh a bunch of low end um a bunch of low end is it very dry now okay let's um let's put uh hey there we go how's that a little bit it's funny cuz the effect All right, this this mixer, it's awesome mixer, but it sends everything pre-fader, but the effect fader does indeed um, impact the um, the pre-fader signal. That's very interesting. Interesting choice they made because uh, anyway. Um, all right, so yeah, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff today. We're going to talk about traveling on the road eating on the road i got a, a bunch of musicians here that just happen to be bass players it really only happened accidentally folks it was it was one or two and then it turns into a gaggle uh Rick, Rick Gregory says a murder uh <laughs> ben davis says what do you call a bunch of, <laughs> what do you call a bunch of bass players uh unemployed that's very good it's very good <laughs> Uh, that's very good. Um, uh, yeah, a bu bunch of bunch of cool stuff was in the news. A bunch of not so cool stuff, but um, we might get into some of that. Uh, let me look here and make sure we're ready to go. Uh, hey, what did you have for lunch today or dinner if you're overseas? I know there's some folks that come in from. Um, other lands uh let's see oh okay uh yeah there we go uh right anyone um mp4 is that did i make that into an mp4 yes i did um What did I have for lunch? You know, I, it's been a while. I had some of that, um, had a 
delicious spinach omelet with the um, just egg stuff, um, a just omelet. Um, and that was good. A lot of salad lately, too. Yeah, a lot of just great raw veggies. Had an apple, had some dates. What else? A great salad with some avocado and a million vegetables and cabbage and lettuce. Oh, Scott Fisher had a chopped kale salad, mini bell peppers and caramelized onion hummus. Can't go wrong there. Is that the Sabra brand? I know they make a an onion hum a caramel caramelized onion one. Uh, Sharon's here. Hey, uh, no, you're not late. It's uh this show. It's whenever you get here, and then you can watch it until the EMT. Everyone remember the EMT? Well, we haven't seen it yet. Frank, what's that? Is that a song? I'll check that out later. Blood Simple? What is that? Something about Texas. Is that a movie? That sounds familiar. Blood Simple. That was a movie, right? Um, so a couple things about bass players. A, little, a couple announcements. And then... Uh, I'll have some guests in about five minutes or so. But um, this Friday night, and, and you met him a little bit last week. We're going to see the rest of the interview today. The great Carmine Rojas, who, um, wow, you know, um, started out in the early 70s with um, LaBelle, which is a pretty awesome place to start. You know, they they were really... Breaking out then, this is when it was still Patti LaBelle, Sarah Dash, and um, Nona Hendrix, when it was still, you know, th that trio. And I didn't realize how much stuff they did in the 60s, so that, I've been checking that out. But that first album um, that, that Carmine was on, actually, it's, um, it's their second album. I forget the title of it right now, but... Um, yeah, you know, he he was playing with them since 73. Most of you know him, though, from, uh, as we talked about last week, from David Bowie, Let's Dance. And um, and the next two or three records and the next couple of tours. But um, he played on the uh, Pressure Cooking album. And we're going to see a little bit of his interview. I think I have that, if I found the right one. Oh, yeah, Quick Time. There it is. And we saw a little bit of it last week, right? We saw... It's got... In people um, that don't know this, please look up yeah. apple cider vinegar, Bragg's organic, or any of these other. Yeah. We saw it's, it's talking really about. It, and that's what that's actually saving much more than the, the actual foods. There we go. So we'll come back to that. And um, he's played with on bass uh, and a lot of co composing, actually. He's got some um, composition credits on a few Rod Stewart things and 15 years with Rod Stewart and still playing with him uh, when we can. Go play Joe Bonamassa. So Carmen Rojas was where we started our base holiday. And um, and by the way, I'm, I'm kicking it for a band with no bass player. Remember this band? They're still doing stuff. Matson Morgan. Um, but uh thought I'd have a couple bass players that I used to play with. And it, that, it just kind of snowballed into a really cool thing. So we're going to be talking about one... You know, all kinds of things. We have a lot of things in common, but we have music in common and, um, you know, journeys into environmental and, and you know, pro-animal kind of moves in our lives, um, plant-based. So, Frank, yeah, that's a good lunch. Pasta, Genoa, pesto. Gen Gen Genoa. Patri di Genoa. General pesto. What's in that? I mean, because you can make pesto a hundred ways. You know, I've been around Italy a bunch, and everyone does it differently. Some with pine nuts, some with walnuts, uh, some with other nuts, some with pecorino cheese, Romano cheese, some with no cheese. Uh, and of course, there's a million parsley sometimes, right? Basil and parsley. Always basil, but sometimes basil and parsley. What did you use? Asparagus and mushrooms, can't go wrong, can't go wrong. Guilty on the summer? Ah, oh, no guilt about that. That's an awesome brand. Why is that guilty? What, wait, what did I miss? What, news items just happened. Are they supposed to be, are we supposed to boycott them now? Did someone say something inappropriate? But uh, 
yeah, I, I don't, no guilt there. Um, Rich Gregory, well, thanks for thanks for saying hi. But Thought Blood Simple was a movie. Um, let's go back to some food. Jack, uh, that sounds good. A uh, rice tofurkey sausage. R a rice and then tofurkey sausage, onion and curry. Can't go wrong. That tofurkey sausage is the bomb, isn't it? So good. And that's such a high protein. Uh, I think they're, how much are they? They're like 12 or 15 grams of protein per sausage or, or even a little bit more. Good stuff. Green leaf salad, nice. Cherry pie for yogurt. All right. And yogurt and cherry pie, nice. Um, that's right. Raymond Zarek was a bass player. All right. Artichoke pesto. That sounds good. Wow. Um, I'm hungry for second lunch already hearing all this. So, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's bring some of our guests in. Uh, Jerome is here. Let's see. Jerome, I see. I see two devices. I don't know which one I should. Which one I should bring in? Check. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Do you hear me? I do. Yeah, man. No, uh, no camera yet, but. Um, oh, really? I wonder what happened to my camera. So I see two devices there. Did I pick the wrong one? Um, what for me? Yeah. Yeah, I maybe you did because I'm using this um, this Zoom webcam. Okay, cool. Let me uh, here. Let me um, wait. That's weird. Um, ask to start video. Let's try that. Put in the waiting room. Um, let's try that. I just I just hit them both, and let's see if that works. I've never seen that. Hmm. Wait, because this was – I set this up, and it was working, like, okay until I joined the room. Okay. Uh, let me just check my video sesh, uh, uh, settings. Okay. And and on the bottom of, I know you know this, but on the bottom of Zoom, are you, is it, is the video blocked? Or, no, that's not it. Yeah, no, but that's, that's not the right camera. That's oh. The thing. Um, I have two cameras and okay. for some reason, <clears throat> wait, hang on a second. You know, maybe when you because it was working up until you admitted me to the room this is not the right camera okay um these are not the droids <laughs> we are not <laughs> these are not the droids you're looking for just a minute uh, okay, okay now... yeah, no, we're we got we got time we're, we're... should be working now all right. Oh, this is Raymond Helfrich says, Raymond, you know Antar also? Man, you are the man. Hmm. Antar, what's up, dude? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm hanging in, man. I'm right. I'm trying to how do you know how do you know Ray Helfrich? That's crazy. Um I don't know how I know Ray Helfrich. From from gigs probably. Yeah, I would imagine. That's how everybody knows everybody <laughs> these days, you know. Or at least it used to be. Yeah, <laughs> right. When they were right, right. They know us from, um, from previous gigs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he says he, he, met, he met him through me. Oh, so maybe, wow, that goes back. Because so, we haven't played oh, a yeah. gig in three or four I mean, years. Couple years. Three or four years. Yeah, and we on. only... And we've only played gigs in the last 10 years every three or four years. That's right. So Ray says after right. – okay, so it's when, um, it's when the trio op when the trio opened for, for Project Object. Exactly. Ah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's right. great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Antar Goodwin. Yeah. My, um, you know, former <laughs> drummer and former bass player. Well, I mean, you're always, you're always my bass player, but, so, so, but formerly a drummer. <laughs> And um, that's funny, right? We, yeah. No. We, we started out, you were playing drums. I know. I know. I remember I remember doing a recording session with you. Didn't we do a, 
Sure. And I, we did a Todd Rundgren. That's right. Tribute or something that, like yeah. that. And we had to do, I remember that too. Like that was, that was like one yeah. of the first CDs I was on. I'd been on a couple, but that was like, like it was, I, it was another milestone in my life. That's great. I like, I oh, that. Look at that. I, I'm, I'm on the, uh, my name shows up on another thing. You know what I mean? It was kind of cool. No, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. And the funny thing about that that benefit or that uh, tribute is that it um, we didn't do a Todd Rundgren song. I thought, oh, <laughs> we have us do a song instead of an original. So, so okay, well, we'll 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 circle back to that. We've got Jerome here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? The problem is, I wanted to do this in the studio. Okay. And I had both of these computers up just in case I needed to switch. And that might be what's causing the problem. Okay. Yeah. So I will leave this meeting from this computer and see okay. if it's not working on the other one. If it's not, I'll come back in here. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay. The, the power of multi... <laughs> no, you know, it's great. And we talk about it every week how... Um, the um uh, uh uh this pandemic has taught us to uh you know uh, uh let me just reply to a text here this is technical um um the um necessities of being you know having to yeah uh, whether it's it's work you know people i know i know teachers fellow teachers i know but teachers at college, yeah, yeah. university. Oh, nice shot! I know people oh. with with their corporate meetings, and and of course reaching their yep. kids, their grandkids. Their, you know, um, it's people have learned all these. <laughs> people are buying cameras and doing all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, the um, uh, it's funny. The the one funny thing that keeps coming up. You know the company Zoom, right? They make Zoom cameras and little recorders, yep. And stuff, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have a friend who works uh, for Zoom, and he said, um, uh, he said, "You're not going to." He said a year ago. This now we can start talking in terms of a year. So, um, uh, you know, which is crazy, right? You, you can start saying, "Let's see, one year ago, February twenty second, you know, shit was already, you know." But um, but a friend of mine about a year ago said, works at Zoom. He said we're having the craziest year, and that was like in March or April. So two months mm -hmm. in, I was like, "What do you mean?" He says, "What's happening is everyone's on Zoom, right? There's a billion new people on Zoom, and and they're trying to get cameras, and they're looking, and or their boss might say, Jr. Order eight cameras because we got these Zoom things.' Mm -hmm. So someone goes to Google and punches in." Zoom cameras. What what do I do? What do I order? Uh -huh. And what comes up? Zoom. The right. company. Which right. has nothing to do with them. <laughs> right? And someone and JR goes, or, order 12 cameras, you know. <laughs> or, or whoever it is just says, Oh per perfect. Zoom. Oh right. they make little recorders. Well, I I wanted one of those. Ding ding ding. So <laughs> Zoom. A lot of people haven't heard this. Zoom is having the stupidest year ever. <laughs> they're, just, they're just like, what the fuck did we do? Uh, that's hilarious. Wait, yeah. you see and hear me okay? Absolutely. Cool. Uh, I've never met you before, Antar. No, I, 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 I mean, nice that's to meet right. you, man. I, I dig your electric upright. Thank you. I can see the NS designs. Yeah, man. I like the NS, man. They're... One of my mentors, uh, Tyrone Brown, played electric. He played upright, like an acoustic kind of contrabass thing. And then he played one of those. He was one of the first guys I saw play one with with Rochelle Farrell. Blew my mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Very, very nice. Cool. Very nice. And is that a Chapman stick behind you? Or yeah. Is that a last Chapman year? stick. Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got you got all the big boy toys, man. That's like some grown man stuff you got. <laughs> <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, That's what they say. I'm still trying to convince people I'm an adult. <laughs> well, why bother doing that? Yeah, well, they know. said if you haven't grown up by fifty, 
just give it up, forget it. It's not going yeah, to happen. Don't, don't yeah. the, no, no, no. It's it's um uh um it, it's it's overrated. <laughs> yeah. No, it is, and um. <laughs> I just turned 56, so I'm I'm proud to say I'm I'm f I'm f I can act like four 14 year olds and and be <laughs> but no, I was just gonna ask if I was just gonna ask if you if you gentlemen knew each other because of the New Brunswick thing, but but you don't, so no. you oh, you're in New Brunswick. Uh, that, well, that's no, what I was not say. anymore, but I was at some point. Uh huh. Okay, when did you leave? Oh, I mean, a good 10, 15 years ago, I moved to. Uh, the Woodbridge, Edison, Woodbridge area. Okay. And then I started, most of my playing shifted to New York. Right. So I was doing a lot. I was basically a New York City working musician who lived in Jersey because for some reason I thought paying Jersey rent and then $400 in gas and tolls every month was cheaper than just getting a $1,300 apartment in New York. <laughs> um, you know? That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Right. I like and theoretically it is because the cost of goods and services in New York is so much more that yeah. like living in Jersey you save money. But the amount of time I spent commuting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, just it would have been easier just to move to New York. You know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, so, so it's been a good you, fifteen years. Were you a New Brunswick native? I well, Somerset, Franklin. Okay. Native. That explains and, it. Because I I wasn't and I left there in 1985. Okay. Right. So, yeah, you were quite uh, not around, yeah. I guess. No, <laughs> in, in 85, yeah, because, I mean, you and I didn't meet until the 90s, Andre, right? Um, the 90s, I would say. Early 90s is when we met. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, I'm trying to picture. Right, so we, we were gigging and into the mid 90s um yeah yeah that's funny i was just gonna ask if you guys o felt like you overlapped at all um but um i guess not uh Jer jerome you were when did you leave brunswick i left in 1985 85 wow and yeah. went uh you you went to europe then or somewhere else yeah, than... no, i went i went sw straight to sweden in 85 85 yeah, i was there pretty much until two years ago Right, right. Wow. Yeah. So you were, you were playing bass there professionally? Like you left for yeah. musical reasons? Yeah, actually I, I did. I um, Initially I had a band here in New Jersey called Venus Envy. And the idea was that this band was supposed to get signed by this Swedish label. So, you know, we packed it all up. When, that was the band I had with Bill Bryant. And Steve Conte was actually the guitar player at the time. Wow. Uh, so Jersey. Steve couldn't leave at the same time that I did. And I brought Bill over a few months later. And then Steve got signed to Atlantic with his band. So mm -hmm. I had to get another guitar player. So we brought a guitar player over from New York named Chuck Anthony. And um, the rest is kind of history. I, I don't know how much you want to hear about this whole Venus Envy story, but it was quite a story. We, um, you know, we got established there. So, so yeah, cool. that's uh, how it so started. So what brought, what brought you back? My parents. Okay. Yeah. You know, sure. parents get old and yeah. you have to come back and handle that. Yeah, so, no, that, that's real. That's... I mean, I'm remarkably curious only because like, I, I really, once they lift the ban, and people start letting other people in. I think it might be time for me to go check out Germany or someplace for a couple of years. So mm -hmm. I might have a lot of questions for you about just living overseas and working as a musician and stuff. I, I'm know. the worst person to ask about that because <laughs> I, I, I grew up in Germany. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I moved to the U.S. when I was like 22 in 1980. Mm -hmm. And um, and I left in '85 and went went to Sweden. You know? <laughs> so it's like asking me about Europe is it's not how do you say it's not very objective my perspective. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, um, I, I, we, 
I was going to ask, is that the Conti, Steve Conti, is that the one who played in uh, New York Dolls later? Yeah, yeah. He, he went on to do the Dolls. He, he did Mink DeVille. He's right. been doing the Michael Monroe band for like ever now. Oh, wow. Um, his own solo project, you know, both with and without his brother, John, who I, I, I'm pretty sure you know John Conti very well, right? These guys are from like Matawan, New Jersey, right? Yeah, Matawan. Conti. Okay. Okay. Their yeah. moms are keyboard. Yeah, Rosemary Conti. She's a legend. Yeah. I know, met them in the eighties. Like, I, yeah, they were at Rutgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. We got Ben Davis here. We got one more bass player to. We got a couple <laughs> more bass players, but we got one more arriving. Uh, Jerome, we have a still picture of you. Is this supposed to be video? Yeah, it's supposed to be video. I wonder why it went still. Okay. I think it was video at some point, and then it just froze. Okay. Oh. Mr. Know, this camera might be a little dodgy. Okay. I'm gonna go to the other room. Is this supposed to be video? Yeah, it's supposed to be video. I wonder why. Um, let's see. It, hello, hello, hello. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I just just hearing some some uh, loop back there. Um, Ben Davis, what's up, bro? You, can you hear me? You, I you got to unmute there. I, I don't know if I was hearing your. You hear me now? Yeah, yeah, awesome. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Davis. Um, Antar, do you know Ben? I don't What's think up, so. Antar? How you, got... you doing, man? It's, I remember you. I remember that face. It's uh, been a long time, but, but yes. did, maybe, did you used to go see Stretch? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. We used, to open, up, we used to open up for Stretch. We That's opened right. up for them a couple times. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jerome. Yeah. yeah. Shows. I remember. I remember, I remember, I don't forget faces, names are terrible, but faces, <laughs> they, they get in there. Stretch, yeah. what a great band. Oh, man, yeah. you know, to say the least. Yeah. And and as we're bonding around some four-string low-frequency energy, actually, ten-string, we'll talk about in a minute, but no, <laughs> what, what, how, how how appropriate to, um, to, 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 that we all stood and watched Dave LaRue at some point. Yeah. Stood and watched. Hung out and watched him drink. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, the third party. He could put After it away. After the show. And, um, you know, uh, uh, but um, just, you know, monster, monster player, you know. But, oh, yeah. but you know, but, remarkable. Was he remarkable. Heavy, you know, there, was, there was some other drinking in the band. But I think they, they would just have a beer or two. If I remember. No, just was, only after the gig. Yeah, yeah, after the gig. Yeah, he only was. Only after the gig. But after the gig, he. He could hang. He would have a few. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, I, I was just sitting there like that after every show. And folks, yeah. you know, um, if if you're into fusion and rock and jazz rock and any of those configurations, and and uh, and power pop, you know, he's in a great power pop kind of a band called Flying Colors now with Steve Morse, who he's been the bass player of for thirty years. Mm. Flying Colors is great. Uh, Neil mm. Morse and. Mike Portnoy and stuff like that. But yeah, Dave LaRue, all four of us, we kind of, this is in the 80s and 90s, we used to watch him play. So here we are, folks. We, so today ends up being like a New Brunswick reunion. <laughs> um, Jerome, did we, did we ever jam together? I feel like I jammed one time with you. It, you know, it's very, very likely. It was so I, long ago. I know. Um, something with very me, likely. You know, and something with, uh, oh, you know, Something with John Ritchie, maybe? Yeah, like that, a, that's possible. But, you know, a weird. Could have been like one of his one off yeah. things that he put together outside of Luna Bear. I feel like, you know, I, I just feel like we played, you know, but that's the other thing. G getting old enough where I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tell me, on that. maybe we did. You know, I had this, I had this. And and I, I think my memory's really good. I'm not. I'm I'm fully cognizant and waiting for things like Alzheimer's and different things. You know, I, that's a very serious problem. My parents didn't have it, so I, my, my dad did actually, but not both my parents. My mom was fine, but um, not, without that, I think I've just gone to so many shows that I I literally sometimes sit there. Did I see them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I have a fresh picture in my mind of the concert but then you watch so many youtubes it starts to seep in and um i literally yeah so um but anyway so 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 we've got um let, let's say we did play together but I've, I've jammed with these gentlemen and it just so happens here we are years later in life and we're on this plant-based journey 
So we're here to talk about a little bit of that. Um, yeah. Antar and I were in a band um, called Hidden Agenda, and we still play every few years. And then Ben and I were in a band called Rhythm Method a couple years before <laughs> that, a decade before that. So, um, you know, uh, and, and we might have some other visitors. Uh, Antar, what, what, when did you get into plant-based life? What, what, give us a quick story on what. When? Oh, let's see. Uh, I, in my, in my mid, early to mid twenties, I started to get carpal tunnel syndrome because I was practicing way too much, way too hard doing incline push-ups with my feet up on the bathtub, bending my wrist backwards, just like all the worst stuff you could do to stay in shape and do stuff. And I was dating a woman who was a vegetarian, which as Samuel Jackson says, you know, my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which pretty makes, makes me a vegetarian too. <laughs> Is that his line? That's great. <laughs> right? And so I, she said, like in all seriousness, she said, listen, if you cut out a bunch of the meat and cut out a bunch of the dairy, you will find your inflammation goes down a huge amount. And I did like, and she was a massage therapist. So she gave me lots of massages and I changed my diet, started doing yoga and that changed it. And then I got into an African martial arts program and we had to do a 30 day raw food fast. Wow. You could only eat raw food for 30 days. Sure. And it changed my life because it was the best I ever felt in my life. That was probably around 27, 26. You know what I mean? And it literally changed my life. And so I flirted back and forth with pescatarian and ovo, ovoatarian, not yeah. lacto. I haven't done dairy since I was like 24. Right. You know, but like, I flirt with all kinds of other stuff, but at the end of the day, I always come back to some kind of plant-based thing. Sure, know? sure. And I think that's in between. We were in a band, and then we were doing other stuff. Then we were playing again years later. I think yeah. it happened for you in between that break, right? It did because I remember I you wanted you were looking for roommates, and you said one of your rules was you no meat in the house. I was like, well, I can't live right. There. That's I right. Like, I can't live in a house with a guy. I said, "What if I use my own pots and stuff?" You're like, "I don't want the smell of it in my house." Yeah. And no, I, I, I just like hardcore bad, and I was like, "Oh, I guess we can't live together." And then, like a couple of years later, I would have been the same dude. <laughs> you know? Right, right. No, that's true. I forgot about that. I had that house in New Brunswick uh, downstairs I mean, of a house. I want to say it was on Plum Street. I it it say. was a meat free. Yeah, it was a meat free house, yeah. and um, I remember I sublet summer to some guy and. He, you know, that's the agreement. Fine, you know, and and I wake up one day and the house is filled with bacon. Like he <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah. couldn't be any worse than that. Yeah, very yeah. unpleasant smell once you're turned off from it. So, Ben yeah. Davis, um, oh, Ben's frozen. Well, we'll come back to Ben. Jerome, well, how are you, man? What, what? Uh, yeah, what? I'm, I'm moving to. Uh... Say again. Did Ben say something? I'm gonna... I'm gonna move to a better uh, spot for internet. Okay, yeah. I think uh, I'm in an inter internet uh, no good zone, so I'm moving. Okay, yeah, find your find find a spot. <laughs> um, uh, Jerome, yeah, tell us a little bit about that early. Wow. Well, it's pretty early. Um, <laughs> I swear this is true. Okay, uh, when I was eight, um, my my grandparents. Uh, lived in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, my, in fact, my family has been in Charleston since the dawn of time. Right. And um, my granddad used to go crabbing and fishing and that, you know, that's what people do down there. Sure. And so we were over here visiting them one summer during school break and my granddad took me fishing with him. And, um, you know, the first time I was eight years old, never been fishing. And I'm going with my granddad, you know, so this is like, yeah, heaven. And so we're on the boat and he's doing the fishing thing. And um, I kept noticing, like, he'd pull the fish out of the water and put them on the floor of the boat and they'd be flopping around. And I'd be like, you know, granddad, what's what's that about? And, you know, what's happening? What, what are they doing? And he yeah. says, well, they're dying. 
and I just lost <laughs> Wow. <laughs> completely lost my mind. He had he had to cut the trip short and take me back to the house because I, I was just completely devastated. Wow. And um, then not long after that, there was a episode with uh, crabs. You know, the you know they were out crabbing. They bring home the fresh crabs. You know, and and you know I almost had to go into therapy after that that trip. So. You know, then I, I just got this idea in my mind that meat was murder and kind of steered away from eating animal products pretty much from then until I was 16 when I really was first introduced to the idea of vegetarianism as a thing and sure. decided at that point that I was a vegetarian. Sure. So it started at 16. Um, there have been brief respites or, you know, periods where I've done things like sure. eating fish or, you mm. know, done dairy in, you know, different forms. Um, pretty much for the last 10, 12 years. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, am I kidding? It's been even more than that. But the point is, it's been pretty full on for, for quite some time now. Um, especially, you know, like you get older, um, and you start realizing that health is such a delicate thing, you, you know, you kind of nail it down. So, um, yeah, I've, I've been, there was, a, when I was living in Thailand, um, I went raw vegan for wow. like two years. Love it. Yeah. Best two years of my life. Like when Antar mentioned no. that, that <laughs> month, I was like, dude, two years of that, right. you know, that was oh the best God, two dude. years of my life. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, you you just seconded seconded that emotion. I'll third it, and and I, I think it's going to be fourth. But I tell you, I think back about, um, and I, I feel good. I you know I'm not like oh man, I, I'm so tired. I feel sick. Yeah, I feel great. I eat you know really well. But I think back to my about almost two years. Yeah, it was about a year and a half to two years raw, right around the year 2000. And I I think about that shit. I was that was the peak of my existence. I, it was unbelievable. I was seeing, you know, <laughs> fifth <laughs> dimensions, right? You, you know, I really, I think about it a lot. And, and, and every once in a while, I'll try to pick up the raw percentage. But, you know, it, you're right. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a pinnacle. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my diet is essentially raw vegan interspersed with some cooked foods. Great. That's yeah. Wow. And, you know, sometimes they're, they're fairly processed foods. Like we talked about uh, last week, you right. know, I was eating uh, like a, a gluten-free pasta with, you know, vegetables and stuff of sure. some sort, but mm -hmm. yeah, but you know, with brewers, not brewers yeast, but uh, nutritional yeast and, yeah. and all of these things to fake it. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> well let, let's let's pause there because I, I get hung up on language, and I always say we shouldn't empower the critics though and call it fake, the, right? The, I mean, there's nothing it's more real food. than than real food. Than what we're having, and and here's here's uh, and just a gentle suggestion. I'm not going to tell you how to speak or what to think, but just a gentle. And here's one of my things for that. I love studying food history, and I've been amazed reading about, for instance. I bring this up a lot on the show. Do you know they were using almond milk in the 1300s? Yeah. Mm. Crazy. And that yeah. was just in Europe. It, that's just in Europe. And, and, and in Asia, too, they were starting to use mm -hmm. some, some nut substitutes. And, and, of course, coconut milk was there. And there's some stuff in, 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 in South, uh, uh, both South America and Africa. You find little uses of, of ground nuts and things, and they make a paste out of it, and it becomes stocks and things. But... Um, but but anyway, in that same period, and when these articles I was reading on almond milk, I found that when they were out of eggs, or eggs were scarce, they would stretch the eggs out with almond meal, like what they were cooking, or they would uh, they would they would stuff sausages with a combination of stuff: lentils, nuts, eggs. They had eggs were easier to get, so you ground up all kinds of stuff basically. But but I think what what that's been teaching me is that food is really about the texture the color, the flavor, the spicing. And then what's around that has <laughs> changed. But you know what I mean? But as, 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 as um, plant-based people, we get into this thing where, where people are always like, that's not real. And you're like, wait a minute. So there's this static view today of what's real when really in history, it's, it's been like this. They've, they've, you know, 
humans have used all kinds of stuff you know um so so yeah embrace that that that's a great uh that's a great uh um men, uh, menu item you just gave us um hey ben are you you're you're on solid audio and stuff you yeah like came in next to my studio i'm like okay i need i need awesome. some solid so here we go ladies and gentlemen uh, ben yeah. Dave, so so um one of one of my, actually the first I, I was I almost said real band, which is a diss of the first band I was in. I was in I was in a band I started playing late, like in eighty three. I was eighteen years old and uh and I was in a band called Circle of Fifths. How creative. <laughs> Something else's band I was in and um now I teach the Circle of Fifths. But um uh that band was kind of short lived. We played a little bit. But the first band I was in where I was writing songs and doing stuff was Rhythm Method, which was with Ben and Bob Ramos. And um, so so Ben's, you know, uh, such an important part of my musical life. First time I was in a band with someone with all these synthesizers, too, which, you know, here we go. <laughs> and this is your fault. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> you, you, you certainly encouraged it because I always loved synths growing up, like hearing them on records. And, and I think I, I actually had one or two by then, right? Because I had yeah. – I had a little. You had a really uh, small one. I can't remember what uh, Roland something maybe. I had a Korg Poly eight hundred. That's right. That's oh, it. the Poly eight hundred. Yeah, which which I, I had sold, but I just got one. Uh, someone gave me one <laughs> two years ago, but um, but anyway, it was first band where I had this amazing keyboard player who was also a bass player. We all wrote music, and we 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 got good enough to open for Stretch. I will say. <laughs> so, cool. so um. Ben, how about you? What 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 was your kind of genesis moment of um, you know, and uh, saying okay, let me my diet. What what's you know what, what happened? Well, you know, it it for me it was just kind of a blessing. I was going through a lot of kind of crazy things at the time and kind of intense emotional stuff, and then you know, at one point. I, I swear this is crazy, but I, I, I walked, went for us going for a walk and I stopped in just kind of a little mini hike around my area. This was in uh, outside of Red Bank. And I, I, I found this little pond and I was sitting at the pond. And at the time I was just getting into meditation. So I was really kind of going deep and trying all these different meditation practices and stuff. So I was sitting down next to this pond and I, I was meditating. And then I, I kind of came out of it and I looked and in the pond was, um, to a swan, which is weird for Red Bank, but a swan. Who flew that in? Yeah. Right. A swan and some ducks. And the swan was floating around in all the clean water, right? The swan was like meticulously right. take, like taking care of itself and, you know, you know, grooming and being very clean. And then all these ducks were in the murky part of the, they were like, rah, 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 rah. and I just, <laughs> it was just, a, I don't know what it was. <laughs> in that moment, I just saw like, wow, okay. In, in my mind, this was an analogy. It was like, okay, this is, here are the people just not caring about what they put in their body. And here are these beautiful, elegant beings that are meticulously clean and what they, you know, and it just popped. It was just like a moment. I was like, boom. Oh, wow. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's weird. But I mean, that plus years of programming from my friend Dan Gibson, who I should shout out to, whose family sure. was vegetarian and vegan. Sure. Um, and so I'd always go over to their house. And I'm like, what are you guys eating right here? What is this? <laughs> so, the spark was laid down by having a friend, and and I gotta say, I got sh another shout out to Dan. He wrote this great song. Uh, he was uh, when we were coming up. He had a, a house that had some cows next door to him, you know. So he would go out and um, okay, at home though, yeah, yeah. And he would talk. To, he'd hang out with the cows as a kid, and then when he grew up, one day the, the cows just disappeared, <laughs> and and he so he wrote the song called "Who Ate My Neighbors." Oh wow! <laughs> oh, I know that. Song. Why do I know that song? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's possible it, someone else got that idea, you know, these days. But uh, it, it, it was inspiring. I was like, wow, okay, that's real. And you know, all these things kind of came together. And in that moment, when I saw that swan, I was like, ding! I was vegetarian from that point on. I I walked down the street. I went to the little local vegetarian restaurant in Red Bank, which was amazing, uh, by the way. What was it? Was it was this Ty, Ty, the guy, Turkish guy. Oh, he was an intense dude, man. Yeah, like uh, I, <laughs> I went in the back. I was like, I was like, hey, I just want to say, I just turned vegetarian. He's like, you must leave. 
I'm preparing. <laughs> and he was like focused and he was like completely like saying a prayer and focused on preparing, meticulously preparing his food. And I was like, wow, okay, this is a, this is a whole new level of understanding of what it is yeah. to put something in your body, in your temple. And it kind of all kind of went from there. Yeah. So it, it, um, so the spiritual side of it was immediate for you. Yeah, it was kind of a cause and effect, really. Yeah. Spiritual side kind of came first, and it was just, it became obvious to me that the relationship between, you know, there really is no separation between spirit and body. You know, we, we draw this kind of like random line that says, okay, this is where our spirit ends and our body starts. But it was yeah. obvious that, that those were kind of meaningless, random uh, kind of boundaries. No, it's so, true. Yeah. So it just became like obvious for me after at that point. It's like, okay, yeah, this is a literally a temple that literally that we walk in. We walk in with our temple, you know. And would you wear muddy shoes walking into a temple? No, you you wouldn't. You take them off, and you you know, it's just kind of like that that analogy really works for me sure. in the way I see things. Sure. So I try to make the the food about um, connecting to bringing something uh, higher vibration, and and of course. Shout out to you, all you guys who did raw, because you know uh, <laughs> this is not who's. <laughs> I, I ended up going down the raw path as well. Uh, I remember that. I was just gonna. Yeah, say. yeah for me it was uh, seven years. Seven, yeah, that's <laughs> great. No, I, I was gonna say because I remember, likewise with Antar, when we were in a band together, you weren't veg, and then I, I remember years later we were talking, and you in between times that we played. And it was like, hey man, guess what? But 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 I, but I think I didn't even find out till you were gone to California. Yeah, Did no, you? raw raw didn't. I was a bad vegetarian for a while. <laughs> but, but, when you, but when you went veg, how many years before did before going to California was that? Um, let's see. It like wasn't that long. Actually, it wasn't that long. Okay, yeah. that makes because we 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 you know, we all went and lived other lives, right? Yeah. You and I played together till I don't know eighty. 86 or 7 or something and yeah, and, yeah. and then we all went off and stayed in touch but but um i just remember years later in the 90s we, sherry and i came to visit you or something and by then it'd been a couple years but but by then right you were so you yeah I, I remember you were doing raw and and like wasn't the band you were in doing raw and doing yoga together and, and was yeah I, I was in this band Luminaries. yeah i um i i Let's see. Were you at that Bali Spirit Festival? Yeah, we did Bali Spirit Fest, and that was pretty amazing. So, yeah, I started doing the raw, and then another guy in the band kind of jumped on, uh, and, and he still is raw. I mean, he's it's ten plus years for him. I, I kind of got off that train a lot. Back That's awesome. I'm it's looking not for that, you know, not that I don't recommend it. I totally do. I, I like you said. It's like let's go back for a few months. For me, it was very goal oriented. You know. It was goal oriented, you said. Yeah, yeah. Because they, th I mean, they said I don't know how scientific this is, but they said that for every month that you eat completely raw, um, th that you actually detox a year worth of toxins out of your body. Right. So, That's so for me, I was like, okay, I did the addition, and I realized that if I, I can go back to zero <laughs> toxins, if I, if I, if I go this amount of time. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> No, no, and as we know, that's difficult in modern Earth. But, but no, I, I have heard those kind of things, and and I'm glad you put a caveat there because someone's going to yeah. post a, a medical article or something. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but, but which is fine. I love medical articles. But, 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 yeah, numbers like that are, are very difficult and, and and tough to prove anyway, right? Yeah, and, no, I mean, you know, it, yeah. it was just a, another another good motivational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for me, I, yeah. I'm not challenging you saying it. I, I'm just saying, you know, I've learned from this show that you got, you know. But but one of the funny things is in the raw foods movement, um, which I love. But there's a lot of stuff like that. Like I, never, you probably met some breatharians, right? Who only oh, yeah. breath and. Well, yeah. I'm I'm in L.A., so if it, if it, if it's a thing, if it's a thing anywhere, I've met them. <laughs> yeah, you you met this. this. Wait, I have I have to make a shameless plug here. For please, one. please. My doctor. Yeah. Um, I am a, a, a client of the Nutritional Wellness Center down here. Okay. In, and I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry it's, it's to interrupt, but where are you right now, Jeremy? I'm in Cinnamonson. Cinnamonson, Jersey. Okay. Yeah. So we got Jersey, Los Angeles, and North Jersey, right? Antar? 
I'm in Ashley Philly these days. Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, so you're you're just like 15 minutes, 20 minutes away from me. Oh, look at that. Yeah, All I'm right. I'm over here west of Palmyra. Okay, yep. Yeah. yeah. There we go. And the Nutritional Wellness Center is here in Cinnamonson. It's run by a great guy by the name of Dr. Sean Christopher. Mm -hmm. And um, he's he advocates our lifestyle choices. Mm. And he yeah. has, you know, as a licensed nutritionist and mm -hmm. doctor and everything, has some really great things to say about raw food diets. Great. So, great. Um, yeah, I, I will challenge anyone to uh, take up whatever objections or conflicts they have with that with yeah. him. Of course, he, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Honestly, I, for me, like, <clears throat> I, I think that uh, it's a great choice, but it's something that where you – you have to uh, look at it as something where you're you're fulfilling a wonderful request from your body, you know. It, and you have to be you have to be very disciplined and committed to it if you're going to do it because it's not easy, as you guys know. It's just like you have to. Yep. I mean, yeah. your whole life kind of shifts. You have to think ahead. Well, where am I going to be? Will there be food there that I can eat? Do yeah. I show up? I got to bring my nutrients with me. <laughs> you know, you start that. Do I have the balance of fats and greens? And, you know, it's really an interesting disciplined way to live. But like you guys said, it's uh, magnificent. Once you get the body balanced to that and it's on only requesting one of three things, either a fat, you know, a green or, you know, fruit. fruit it's just like, yeah, yeah. That, no, it's that's an amazing place to be. You're like, oh, my, I'm going to be doing some physical work today. I better do a little, few more fats. <laughs> you start, yeah. it's, in, it's amazing. But, but the food is, I mean, we're lucky. I came along right at a time where there's like, there were like eight raw food raw restaurants. Food. Yeah. No, no it, not many of them left, if any, mm. one or two, I think, max. It's more of a fad, unfortunately. But it, you know, it, it definitely like had an impact. And I, and I noticed that it still appears anytime I go to a vegetarian restaurant, there's always a raw appetizer or, a, you know, you know, for me, it's metaphoric too to, um, to having flesh eating people in my life. Whereas, um, I, 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 it probably made me 20 years ago. It is now made me realize a little bit more. Um, and this show is about that. This show is very tolerant where if people eat meat or fish or they hunt even come on, you know, check out this show. Cause this show is, specifically about hey can you can you quit one day a week can you do that from an <laughs> environmental point of view can you just cut it back that's what my vibe is on this show people know that and they also know that that i i it's about the environmental side so getting people to eat more local more simple which raw really you know answers a lot of that i would say for me it it, it got in the beginning months of figuring it out and like getting it dehydrated and all that but once i got it it actually was pretty easy Actually, and, and in fact, I toured a number of times raw, and I would take a little cooler, just a very small, like one of those coolers that's like a, a shoulder kind of a thing. So I had a little pouch in there with chopsticks and salt and pepper and, you know, uh, nutritional yeast and stuff. And I would carry almonds, Brazil nuts, you know, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. And I had uh, just things that were non-perishable, you know. And all I would need to get was with salad, fruit, and avocados every couple of days. And I did it living out of a van. I think the, the part though that, that's difficult, and you said it in, in, in your, your, your description there, I agree. It, it's, it's the part that's difficult, at least I found, and talking to some other raw foodists, is the social part of it. The fact that you're, you know, if we go to a restaurant, you're only having a salad. If you're doing this, so it, it's really the, the, we're in a cooked world, you know, and that, that after a while that became you know not i wouldn't say again it was just very subtle it was fine it's no weirder than being a vegetarian to some people <laughs> but but it, it got um there's a vibration thing where you were just too out there you know <laughs> me, me personally because it, it's heavy shit and one of the things i, I love hearing this gyrum that uh, the that your doctor endorses it because um the fact of the matter is, and the, 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 the profound thing that hit me coming along is that we're the only species that cooks our food. Billions of species of animals and creatures and protozoa and algae, whatever we want to call it. This is heavy duty, folks, if you've never thought about it. No other organism 
takes fire and burns their food. Think about that. And someone's going to say, well, cats eat food. And people will say that. That's what I love about, <laughs> about the debating mind. People will say that without thinking about the fact that and humans are the ones giving dogs and cats cooked food. <laughs> Like, you know, I've had, I've had actually yeah, people... Your dog doesn't cook its yeah. own hamburgers. So, 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 so as if you have to say it, in nature, left to their own devices, animals do not... And as a matter of fact, you can see articles on how zoo animals don't do as well as, as their counterparts in the wild and all these things, you know. And so even if you just reduce your cooked food, folks, think about that shit. Every mm -hmm. other animal is leaving the enzymes, the minerals... All the things in there, so so that's that's profound. Uh, Jerome, you so you your band was um, uh, uh, well, Machine Gun. I remember, like yeah. Well, there uh, were bands before that. So many, so many. But the one I kind of met you. Yeah. And, but um, tell me a little bit about uh, just in general traveling with bands. When what was it like you <laughs> know, in the eighties? Say being <laughs> carried and kind of going like in, yeah, uh, that those were the days. You know, um, I, I, I used to hang out with John Sinclair a lot. Oh uh, yeah. We lived together in London. Uh, like white uh, Panthers, MC five. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. That John. Yeah. That's great. In fact, he, he does a podcast weekly that I should post the link for because he's Please. still at it. Okay. No, no, um, Radio Free Amsterdam. He does a, a, a show on Radio Free Amsterdam. Okay. Please. Um, yeah. Or send still it. Still very active in Detroit. But anyway, um, he's not a vegetarian. <laughs> sure. That, that, um, that's fine. Yeah. But he had this thing up until not too many years ago where he was constantly on tour, you know? And living with him in London and seeing how, you know, because like he had this like kind of base in London and in Amsterdam, and in New Orleans, and in Detroit. Wow. And he was constantly moving between these places. And when, you know, when I got to know him, he was already in his, he, he was like around my age, actually. So it seems like he's so much older. But he was like, he was in his 60s when I, when I first met him. And, um, and I just looked at him, I was like, wow, look at this guy. You know, he's like this old guy and he's just constantly on. I want to be like him. Right, right. You know, on when the I'm in my 70s. I want to. That's who I want to be. Yeah. So I was even if, you know, while I had like, you know, my my apartment in Stockholm and that was my my home, I was always on the road with somebody doing something or working the cruise ships because I, I did the cruise ships wow. there for like ever. That was like my bread and butter gig. Um, but, uh, you know, I. There was, um, you know, I was with the Dr. Alban band, which might not ring a bell with anybody here because never really hit in the States, but in, in the rest of the world, literally the rest of the world, we were like on par with like the Beatles. I mean, it was just like a super, wow. um, yeah, Dr. we did Alban. like, you know, major festivals in South America and Asia and Africa and, you know, just everywhere could not get arrested in the U.S., just, I mean, just face it. You've never even heard Dr. Alban, right? No, I not say anything to you, right? A L B A N. Uh huh? A L B A N. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it distant, distant bell. It rings, but never heard yeah. any of the music or. or... Which shocks me because, uh, I mean, how could something so massive go so well, undetected? You know, it, 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 just the sidebar for a minute, I, it happens all the time. And, and I think, you know, most of us travel around the world, especially you and I, and we right we run into these bands in Chile. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, it's funny you say this because just yesterday I was reading about uh, Zucchero. You know them? Yeah, Zucchero. Zucchero. Sorry, yeah. Zucchero. How many Americans know them? You know, do you know them, Ben Antar? You know that band, Zucchero? No. There you go. Massive, right? Wow. A hundred million albums or whatever, 50, 60 million at least. Huge artist. Yeah, huge. Inside this this country and. And, and then, uh, and then, also case in point, I'm doing uh, this Friday the interview with Carmine Rojas and Zach Alford from Bowie. Mm -hmm. And Zach plays with this guy Hotai. Do you know Hotai? I don't know Hotai. Yeah. That's another one where, mm -hmm. if you look him up, he's like 60 million records around the world, huge well, everywhere yeah. else. You know. Yeah. And so so no, yeah. You, you raise a great point that there's who knows. It's just well, what what it reminds us, and Americans forget this. We're only 4% of the planet. 
<laughs> you know, that's one of the things. Americans walk around thinking that they're ninety three percent or something. I don't know what they're thinking, but but in, but but you know what I mean. They, they we we walk this earth as Americans with a much bigger mental footprint than is reality. <laughs> we have the big army, right? We mm -hmm. we're burning the oil. We're we're, we're eating up the the land, which we is, create the standards. That's right, and a lot of why I'm here is is because. Yeah. At the four percent number, we're something I haven't checked in a little while, but we're always fifty, sixty percent of the the meat and the the crops and all that stuff. So, 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 so you raise a great point that culturally these things can happen outside. Um, you know, I, I want I, I want you to pause there, and um, I wanted to 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 jump to just so people can see it because this was such a big influence on me. Here is Machine Gun thirty years ago. Uh huh. So, uh, <laughs> oh no, I know. Let's see if it'll, there we go. <laughs> Dread, Jerome Dredge and Kilman. Tom Chapin, right? Yeah. Amazing Tom Chapin. Anti, you stood right in that spot, right? The one and only Bob Muso. Okay, so that was that was after I'd moved to Sweden. Okay. Because uh, for a couple of years after I moved there, I would be coming back to do machine gun gigs. Oh. And that bass rig that you see on stage with me, I brought that with me. In the plane? <laughs> used to be able to do used that. To throw things. I know, right? Used to be able to. Br I brought my whole rig with me. Yep. And, you know, we'd put it in the van and carry it to all of the gigs. Yeah, man, because I, I had this, um, I was sponsored by that company at the time that later went on to be a major player in bass amplification. Okay, what company is it? That was EBS. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With Antar, you use that, right? Yeah. Antar, are you using EBS? I, I used to. I don't now. These yeah. days I use Aguilar and Bag End, but... But EBS has definitely been filtered through over the years. Like as my gear got better and better, EBS found its way in there. You know, yep. their their pedals particularly. Like I love their pedals, but their other stuff is pretty killing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I was there at the beginning. Um, it's a long, long story, not to get into. But anyway, yeah, I used to I used to bring my rig over with me. <clears throat> and I remember once I had a rack stolen at JFK. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, well, that's some that... crappy karma for somebody. Yeah. Fuck. How do you steal that? Like, who, who looks at that and goes, oh, well, I could use one of them. I mean. Guys on the inside. Yeah. Maybe. Unfortunately. Baggage handlers, man. They were, they were notorious back in the day. Unfortunately. Yes, man. It, it's, it's, it's bad news. Um. So uh, pausing for a second on that that clip, um, 
and and uh, I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you when you were talking about Dr. Alban. So let's go back to that. Yeah, well, just but, one quick aside. Yeah, come, go to that, and then we'll come back to the machine Before gun. Before machine gun, I was in a band called the Hub City All Stars with, with Andy Bernstein and um, Mark Dolce. Bill oh. Bryant was in that band. Frank Lacey. Oh, Josh Harris. Yeah. I remember I see I remember seeing all those bands. New Brunswick was such a crucible. It was and killing. I, yeah, that was the place, man. I think we're all the also. New Brunswick. Are, are, could we all say that? But New Brunswick is crucial to our Yeah, absolutely. Reality. Let's absolutely. not even you know it, it changed my life in terms of what I how it was when I I started being a professional musician in New Brunswick. Because mm -hmm. the game right. is on. Yeah. Right. But you know, it's but it's not it's nothing like that now. Like, mm, no. like there used to be like three clubs on every block, right? And you could always get a gig, and people would pay three to five dollars to see you, and you could make a little bit of money, and you could actually like your rent was three fifty or four hundred bucks. You know, I mean? like you could work <laughs> and you could live as a musician. You have a couple of roommates and stuff, but nowadays I don't feel like sure runs would, would support any of that. You know? Well, yeah, it, it's. It, it, exactly true, and, and so many so many places have changed, and, and places come and go. And right now, yeah. there's all these towns around America that are the new New Brunswick, where it's dirt cheap. Yeah. You rent a a whole warehouse and put your shit there. So you're hearing that. So um, yeah, but 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 we were lucky to be in that window oh, yeah. where mm -hmm. there was yeah. uh you know cheap yeah. thrills that record store. Yeah, and, that, and one of the primary things about that was most of that store was was discounts and used and cut out right they had they had yeah. a deal they were connected to some distributorship a passport or something and um i i mean i used to go in there and records were three four or five bucks and it was all this yeah. wild you know free jazz and electronic music and i'm on duel and you know jean-luc ponty yeah. and tangerine dream and so um uh, uh, and then a lot of classic jazz people too miles davis and, and charlie parker stuff so so it was like the court tavern was there and one block away was that record store. One block the other direction was the train station. So you could jump and see a show in New York. I mean, it, no, Brunswick was... Um, but these bands that, that Jerome is mentioning, I mean, all at the Court Tavern, um, you know... And the Melody and Patrick. Melody. I was just looking up the Melody. Yeah. yeah. Well, upstairs at the Melody, I saw some of the best reggae in my entire life. I mean, still. Yeah, Junior like, Smoots had a regular thing there for a while. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And, and um, you know, uh, Tiny Light, yeah. uh -huh. Andre, yeah. of course, Stretch. Uh, but Frank Lacey, he had that band Awareness. That was well after my time. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I awareness. missed that. And Awareness blew my mind. Yeah. Um, let me see well, if there's any uh, plus questions. A shout out. I got a shout out to Matt Penfield. Oh, who yeah. Used, oh, yeah. Who, wow. who used yeah. to spin records in, like, the best dance sets ever like in the 80s yeah. like i mean I, I he would kill like all night for like four hours just this non-stop amazing dance music and introduced me to bands like rage against the machine that who i that i heard the first time wow. in the melody wow okay yeah amazing. no I, I was just gonna say you, you as as my buddy napoleon murphy brock says you you took the mouth right out of my words <laughs> 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 yes. but yeah. uh but no, Frank is. Um, I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, uh, Matt Pinfield. I was just going to say, he, he's one of the people where, um, you know, while we were all doing that, he was reporting on it and 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 playing local bands. He would play local yeah. bands on WRSU. Yeah. WRSU, and he would um, he would uh, also. HTC, then he then he went to a bigger station. Then he went to a New York station, and I just read. Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, he's he's starting some new venture in Los Angeles. Some yeah. huge, he's got a huge new gig. Yeah, but, well, he um, he blew up like so big on MTV that he yeah. practically he's right. very well established in LA. You know, um, I mean, really. I'm gonna I'm gonna write Frank Lacey's name in the in the chat. I tell you, folks, go look that man up. Now let's see if there's any questions here. Um. Let's see. Hey, Sabine is here. So, um, Sabine, I hear a bit. Robin says I've been saying your name wrong. Is it, is it? Can you put that phonetically? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, but we, so we have someone in from Germany. We got people all around the country. Um, Raymond Halford, it's very funny. Ray says I was in the band Rhythm Method, but then I pulled out. Ah. <laughs> Where's Bob when you need him? There's one in every town. Yes. Uh, Jack Parra had the Poly Six. Yeah, we're, we're talking of um, talking about some synths. Benny Rodriguez, what's up, bro? Um, yeah, a lot of great comments. Um, Sharon lived in Cinnamonson on Laurel Drive. How about that? Uh huh. And wow. uh, Pete Brunelli. Okay, some bass player love right there. I knew some bass players would come checking it out. So. Guy Samuel says, what do you think about asking meat eaters to start by never eating cows? I know, right? We really should start with beef. And, and um, mm. that's a great question. Um, well, I'll answer that and let me see what other people think. I, I, I think cows are really – who was I just watching a video? Oh, the, the guy, um, Corinne Sutton, the, the African-American dude, the bodybuilder was here about a month ago. I don't remember that guy. Anyway, he, he, he's got a thing on his – Instagram, where he ta he's talking about meeting a cow and petting it and looking in its eyes. So, so Guy Samuel raises a really great point. Um, cows are, are a good one to start because the environmental toll right now, the, the amount of soil and the amount of soybeans that we're growing in the Amazon just to feed. So we almost want to beg meat eaters, like, can you, can you just make it once or twice a month? Can you eat only organic beef? Because because we want you to hear that we're saying we respect your choice. Go go ahead and eat beef if you really. There's no way you're not going to. But can you please, like, just make it go like that? You know, squeeze it down. So 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 I agree. I I start with that. What what's some of your thoughts on that? Antar? What you know when you're approaching someone? Do you do you does does beef stand more you importantly, know, or how do you approach it, that? With it, it's funny because for me. I grew up not eating red meat. Like there was, I didn't have a hamburger or a hot dog until I was in high school. Mm. And it was because like I was in high school and I realized that my parents wouldn't know <laughs> if I just had a tuna sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a double cheeseburger. They'd have no idea because they just gave me lunch money. And that was the first time it, and I remember the first time I ate a hamburger, I felt like, I wonder if they're going to know when I get home. You know? <laughs> so, Son, like, what's that? Right? So for me, the red meat thing has never been an issue. So when I talk to people, I mean, I remember being on the road with a guy who will remain nameless and we would stop it. He's, his body was in a sick amount of pain. And I was like, man, my body was like that too. Just start, cut out the meat and cut out the dairy. Start with the red meat and just wean your way down. And we would go to Burger King or McDonald's on the road and I would have to get a Big Mac with no cheese and no burger <laughs> or a Whopper <laughs> with no burger and no cheese. This is like a lettuce and tomato sandwich with Thousand Island dressing on it. And, <laughs> and, he, and he, would, he would give me such a hard time. Like I have basically told people, <coughs> well, I'll, I'll say this. What made it really easy for me to switch and really get into it was my friend Todd Gardner took me to an Indian restaurant, a vegetarian Indian restaurant, and oh. I and they had a cheap buffet and I could go there almost every day. Oh. And that's what mm. like it just made it easy. And then doing it in New York was my moons because I could go to my moons after every gig and for three bucks I could get some stuff and my it made moon. it easy. Like, and I try to tell people like who are meat eaters like oh let me just take you to this restaurant that's my new method is right. take them to an indian restaurant take them to a place like mamoons and get them something that helped me transition instead of trying to tell them not to eat something because it just because they just it just becomes a a, a religion argument well where are you going to get your protein well you can get your protein from here well i heard you can only get that's like my god is better than your god my god says and you're and it's just like okay yeah let's, let me just Take you to a restaurant and sure. get yourself a falafel with some baba ganoush also mixed in there and extra tahini sauce and just eat it. Tell me what you, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Just tell me what you think. I'll even spring the I'll buy it for three fifty. I'll even sure. pay for it for you. you know? No, that that's and, and if they do want to go down the medical science road, as Jerome was pointing out, let's go. Let's talk about it. And that's what's great. The time we're in, the past decade. 
wow, I, so many articles, so many things in the I mean, Journal of New England Journal of Medicine and Nature, and I kind of bookmark them all and check them out. And they mostly they mostly tend to stop right short of saying, "Hey, go vegan," because they know that's explosive. But but they it's incredible to see long, serious medical studies where they're now they say, "Look." First off, it's fine and it's safe, which they weren't saying for decades, right? There was all this. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's a great advancement. The medical is saying, you know, it's fine. If your child's a vegetarian, you know, make sure like any diet, that's the important part because people then think, well, be careful. Well, why? Be careful. The meat <laughs> eaters, be careful. You're the <laughs> ones with the, the clogged arteries and the cholesterol. You're getting diabetes at alarming rates. Why? I'm not going to. You be careful, <laughs> you know. So, so I, I'm. I'm to have seen it evolve to where the medical industry is saying, hey, it's actually totally fine, totally safe. And in fact, we <laughs> kind of recommend that you at least dial a bit of that in. Like mm -hmm. you're seeing that now in mainstream yeah. Time Magazine, you know, uh, New York Times kind of articles saying, hey, folks, you should eat a lot more plant-based. This guy, Michael Pollan, who I think is great. He's got a bunch of these books out. You guys have seen him, The Omnivore's Dilemma, that guy, mm -hmm. Michael Pollan, right? Check him out if you haven't. He, he's very interesting because he's coming at it from an environmental point of view, from a food history, a cultural point of view. Really great writer. But he says it all the time. He says you should be mostly plant-based. And if you do want to eat flesh, here's what I suggest. F pasture raised lamb, you know, omega fish, uh, omega focused uh, fatty fish from Alaska, things like mm. that. He's very careful. And, and he, um, if we could get more people on board with that, then we're, you know, um, but, but, but that's interesting. Ben, how about you? Cause I, again, you were, you were in actually before, before you answer that, let me give round this out for people with, with some of the performance. Here is Ben playing with the luminaries at Occupy Los Angeles. If you love yourself, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up, side to side, side to side, side to side, put your hands in the sky, go side to side, side to side. Oops. Put your hands up. Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. They call me Jay Brave, I'm making these real rhymes. I'm jumping them high lines and letting my light shine. I'm putting the meaning in life in the whole fool's mind. You know it's our time for the conscious future. Luminaries who fair pro. Yo, together we do it. We do L to the sky. We're here on my heart, saying, Reach worldwide. Wow. It's time to come alive. The party for 2012 life. It's a beautiful way to awake and embrace all the love and turn your heart to change your birthday. Say yes. We have been down with the lights. So let me scream out loud if you love your life. Put your glories aside. So the world which you made up, this is your time. Commit this. Commit this. And fit this. No limits. We are the children of light. Light, light, light. We need to make it. Show the world which you made up. Wow, that's uh, smoking. Th that's great. <laughs> and, and what I love, and I, there's some great production videos for Luminaries too. Uh, uh, like you guys went you know, in the studio and did some great videos too. That was just a, one that I found. But what I love too is um, any t positive hip hop. I love it. I love all hip hop. I, you know, I don't draw any lines. But what I love about a real positive vibe, and y'all were talking about world peace and harmony and kind of you know in in, in not a cheesy way in a, in a way of like folks think about what we're doing but 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 what i love is that for people who dislike hip-hop they always love to say well it's filled with bad language so i love to play <laughs> stuff like that or, or many other artists de la soul whatever just to say where's that bad language <laughs> <laughs> like this yeah i mean you know so long long yeah the thing that brought us all together, it's funny because we actually all kind of first got together at a raw food restaurant in, in uh, Los Angeles <laughs> called, raw, called Raw Evolution. And it was a, a great, it was like the center of the community of progressive thought, of health, of progressive ideas leading up to you know, pre-Trumpian era. And it was just an incredible community of people. Uh, and... Um, you know, I had been doing actually a composer, film composer, and that sort of thing. Was doing that. I did a lot of yoga music. I was involved in the yoga uh, community, and then um, 
I, I got this first kick. I got to get, I was funny. I was meditating for like three hours a day in the morning at that time. So like, like really into it. And then I got up and I had gotten my first feature film. So I'm sitting down I'm, I get up and I go to compose and I pull up the film and it was a horrible, bad slasher film. <laughs> Not even and, a good slasher film. I mean, if it was a good slasher film, maybe I could have stuck with it, but it was just so bad. And I had to go like bring my energy from this ether world straight down to this like horrible thing and try to write music for that. And I was like, oh God, you know. And I just made a mental decision at the time because like all the indie films at the time were like trying to hop on the bad horror genre. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll wait, <laughs> take, take a pause on my career right now, look for something else. <laughs> right at the time, I, I saw these two, uh, an, an MC and a singer, uh, doing kind of an acoustic hip hop thing. I was like, "Wow!" Not, it was all positive, like high vibration on on stage. You're totally just like vibing on this high, you know, positive energy. I was like, "Wow!" You know, that's I could get behind that. So I, I asked if they wanted to, if I could produce them, and they said, "Sure." So. We start producing and then say, well, we, we got this live band we're putting together. We, we need a bass player. We think you'd be great. I'm like, okay, sounds like fun. So one thing led to another. We, we made um, we, the band we, for, for a gig. It took us three weeks to turn all these loop-based hip-hop songs into a live performance music. And then, bam, like we got a video that you can see that was in a film festival and it started blowing up and just one thing led to another. Is that one of the fully produced ones? Yeah, I mean, the first one we, we made was for um, a film festival, uh, which was called Elevate, which was um, the concept was bringing all different musicians, directors together for the first time and seeing if you can make something complete in a week and then play right. it at the festival. So we got put together with this amazing director who had a red camera at the time, which was nobody had. And it was like, we, we went in, we filmed this video called um, Peace. Okay. What, I see what's free what's energy going? here. Is that a different one? Uh, which one? Free energy. Yeah, that's later on. Okay. It just It's just called Peace. If you put Luminary's music in Peace, it's the first thing that pops up. But it's, it, you know, it, it, it was incredible because they played it at this, you know, we hadn't seen the final cut. It was just, we just did the filming and the editors went crazy for a couple of days. Then we went downtown to the huge the brand new theater in downtown LA, like hot, super high end sound system, huge screen. And we're all like waiting. And the other, the other stuff in that festival was, was pretty good. There's some good stuff, but when all of a sudden they blast this video and the place just, it's peace when I jump on it. So it was, and we were all like, we were all wearing, wearing white at the time. We we're all like, at the front that was my idea by the way we were at the front and you know the the place went crazy it, it was just like a moment and you know kind of it was pretty pretty epic experience to see yourself like on this massive screen with a a killer sound system sure, for the first sure. time. And see your video for the first time like like wow you know with everybody else so it was a pretty cool concept i'm gonna i'm gonna put this link well, i'll put this link why? in the chat I say peace when I jump on a beat. I say peace when I'm walking the street. When I'm walking the street. I say peace when the sun's in the east. I say peace when I need a release. When I need a release. I say peace when I'm facing the beast. I say peace when I'm taking you deep. When I'm taking you deep. I say peace because I know I'm complete. I say peace. I say peace. Peace, y'all. We are luminaries. What's up, y'all? Be brave, the luminaries. That was our brand video. Right, right. That one, just a little taste through there. A little taste. But, uh, but uh, yeah, but you know. The, the video is actually worth watching. It was really well filmed. And, and it's a guitar solo. If you guys are guitar fans, my, my friend Eric Soul Lemon, this guy is one of the best guitar players anywhere, I swear to God. And he did a, a killer solo at the end of that song. Okay. That, that little yeah, just, I, put a, I put a link there for people. Um, I recommend it. Sharon's asking, Jer Jerome, you, you must speak a couple languages for sure, right? How many languages? Yeah, not that many. Um, just, <laughs> just the important ones. I okay. was learning Thai. Oh, that gets um, It's hard to keep together when you're not living there. Uh, mostly, I, I just speak German and Swedish, really, mostly. Okay. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you, say, good, say, say good night to Sabine, who's here in German, if you would. Oh, good night, Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> Sabina's a, a, a dear friend who I met at um, 
we all met at this thing called the Zappanale, this festival. Oh, Zappanale, yeah. I played Zappanale with um, a very interesting group a few years ago, a trio. Oh. Um, Elliot Levine and I had a trio oh. with a drummer named Klaus Kugel, who okay. was also, he, he and I kind of grew up together. He's from the same part of Germany that I grew up in. Wow. And uh, yeah, we did Zappanale. Uh, amazingly enough, because we're as far as you can come from a Zappa band as you could imagine. Uh, yeah, you know that's the thing, though. It, it somewhere in the Zappa catalog, you could you could line up almost anything. That that's... we did we did jam <laughs> with um, School of Rock. Okay. Uh, at that festival, they sure. they had a band there, and like as a closing thing on the night that we played, we did like a a mishmash of bands and all jammed together. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. And I, I, I sometimes I, I've been to Zappanale a number of times, but I, every once in a while I check in online, but I didn't know you played there. That That's yeah. great. I, this circle is so... Yeah, Project <laughs> Object. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, did you play there? This was 2012. Did you play 2012? <sighs> I think you did. I have. Yeah, but we, were, we weren't on the scene... We were on tour. <laughs> right. We just we just hit uh, yeah. Dobran, did the show, and then went yeah. on to the next show. Uh, but I think you were on that that yeah. same bill. I'm pretty same sure. Year, yeah. And I'm I'm very good friends with Elliot Levin. Done many gigs. Yeah, of course. With, yeah. And um and he I remember friends with Elliot. <laughs> I remember him playing there. Yeah, I remember him. Him. Yeah, right, right. He's played with everyone. He's great. We're gonna bring in uh, another dear friend, another bass player, Joe Howell, who um. Who I also oh, this just oh, accidentally oh. turned into a reunion <laughs> of <laughs> different band members. So um, who I also oh, go in. this just accidentally <laughs> turned into a reunion of different band members. I'm here in uh... the. Hey Joe, what's up, man? <laughs> it, are are we hearing your monitors or? Now you should be hearing what you should be hearing. Okay, awesome, awesome. But you can hear us. I can hear you. Okay. All nice right. To to see you all and Peace. this and is Tar, Nice to see you again. I from well, afar. man. I haven't seen you in a minute, man. I didn't know you know Dre. Yeah, <laughs> I, it wasn't snowing the last time I saw you though, so I was out no. in the snow. Almost, yeah. almost, almost as long, actually. Mid eighties, you know. So that's what's crazy. Ben Davis, Joe Howell, Jerome Parker Wells, Joe Howell. What's up, guys? I hear you guys, Ben. I, I really enjoyed the music. I enjoyed. That whole vibe of just like making positive energy go forward, no matter what genre, doesn't matter. Yeah, man, I, I I appreciate that. I really do. It was, um, you know, for us, it was just like God. The world just needs a, another message, especially if you're a kid growing up listening to hip hop. Here is our our our, our we're dealing with this. A lot of the guys were doing social work. The two of the um, MCs were were actively doing social work in, in LA. So they, they were seeing that how into the hip hop the kids were, but how they were struggling, you know, in their lives and they need, they needed some inspiration as well. So we're like, well, let's just make something that kids can really listen to, give a positive message, talk about food, talk about meditation, talk about peace, talk about these things which just aren't presented in the regular media that they're they're completely bombarded by, and give an opportunity to come to a killer hip hop show, and, you know, with some great MCs. I mean, some of these guys are, I mean, they're they're really good MCs. So it it was legit hip hop, you know. I, I like to think, and but you know, we we tried to to keep it real, you know, um, as far as the message goes, give some positivity. And you did, you did, um, you know. Um, Another thing that the connections are amazing. Uh, the, the, another thing is um, you both studied, uh, Joe and Ben, you both studied with Dave LaRue a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Go. Very little bit for me, but I mean, about uh, two lessons is enough for like 10 years with that guy. It's like, yeah, yeah. He's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I mean, we all could have been, this is turning into the Dave LaRue Appreciation Hour, which is fine. <laughs> we, we, we all could have been at the same show. That's what's funny. Folks folks watching this, you got to understand the magic here. This completely got put together um, just randomly last week because a couple of y'all were, were on, and I just, I invited you on air. Remember last year? I said, yeah. hey, what are you doing? And, and, then I, and I just realized, and, and Ben, remember, because I said it to Ben in the chat. I said, yeah, it's going to be a plant-based meeting. And I said, Base, plant based. Remember, we had it literally like real time, and um, and it's, uh -huh. 
it just accidentally happened, you know. And um, but it, it, it's couldn't have planned it to, to find people that I used to play with, and there's it's just a coincidence, you know. So Joe, you know, w- Joe and I played uh, um, uh, was it a couple gigs. You played a couple gigs. It, 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 I one remember big, one. One big giant gig. Yeah, I, I think. But I, I do remember the rehearsals, and I remember you turning me on to Tony Williams. Wow. wow. And, and it's like, no kid. My, okay, great. <laughs> so my work is done. You know, um, that's true. It felt like a couple of gigs, but we just did a couple of rehearsals right up the street. A couple of gigs, dude. That was a lifetime ago. And I know. <laughs> so, so here's what it was, folks. It was 1988. I was moving to Trinidad to work with my dad and sell software. So I planned this gig, like a farewell gig, around my birthday. And in typical style, we opened for Stretch, you know, and uh, and uh, um. But we did. I remember we did this hodgepodge of stuff. We did. We did a Tony Williams tune. We did. Um, uh, da, 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 bum, bum, bum. Lifetime, yeah. Yep. For, for lifetime. I forget the name of the song. Uh, um, we did. Um, we did. I think I'm going out of my head because I'm insane. And I thought, let's do. Is that Burt Bacharach? We oh, did. Yeah. We did a bunch. Of, we did a bunch of my originals, <laughs> and we did some. Just oh, we did another weird cover. I'll never forget this. We did. Um, uh, hear that voice again, Peter Gabriel from So. What a weird. I just remember like being, you know, and I'm still pretty weird, probably people would think, but I remember let's do some shit that no one would ever expect. And and I always remember that night because everything we did, people were like, what the fuck? Who would do <laughs> that? You know, and, <laughs> and, and and what I remember is you were down for it. You were there with your bass. You were like writing it down. You were like, yep, got it. We'll figure that out. And, um, so it's so wonderful memories and, and you know w- hopefully we play again sometime tell us a little bit for you joe what when when did you what year was it and when did you go you know what i you know don't want to really eat animal flesh. oh i saw the documentary on netflix what the health oh so it it was it was basically um yeah no critter should be treated as we treat our food and I was like, well, I, yeah, I don't have to do this anymore. And it, it's not, it's not about my weight. It's not about health. Um, because knock on wood, I feel amazing. I feel sure. that I did when I was 16, only I get tired a lot quicker. Sure. Um, so it, it was a, you know, I, I think this is a period of time in our society or human history that we're all being woken up to new truths and new ideas and new like, well, you know, I always thought that, but, oh, look, they had a camera on. Oh yeah, it's happening. Right. So, um, ah, yeah. So to, to do, um, yeah, to, to help out, you know, Scruffy, Scruffy the cow or Scruffy the chicken or Scruffy the turkey. And, and occasionally, mm-hmm. you know, I'll have some poultry, I'll eat some fish, mm-hmm. but it has been after I figured out what I could eat to replace Meat? Sure. Like, okay. All right. Yeah, that, I could do this. Simple. Very mm-hmm. simple. Yeah. And delicious. Absolutely delicious. No, and that's you the get thing. The meathead a- afterwards, so you can eat as much plant-based food as you want, as long as it's prepared correctly, and you're not sure. feeling like you got hit upside the head with a ball peen hammer afterwards. <laughs> you know, <laughs> more. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, more often than not, sure, you could definitely you could find some stuff that's plant based where you're going, oh, what did I do? But you're right. More often than not, you don't have that that comatose vibe that um, you know that that is 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 in the mainstream. Now I know there's people out there that that are really healthy meat eaters, and and some of them always get offended right here. We know there's some of you that that eat the best organic stuff, and you're eating you know lamb and and bison and and you're eating tons of vegetables but know that you're in the one percentile <laughs> that's not I mean, right that, that's not what's out there it's, all, it's also i think it's also economic right like like when i first started becoming a vegetarian in the 90s there was a couple of vegetarian places in new york but they were expensive yeah like it was, you were very priced out of it you know what i mean like like the way we're in the you restaurants go to get a, yeah. Right, but even right. in the grocery stores, like nobody had organic food except for the really high end places. And like when Whole Foods first came out, it was like nobody would could have like there was I didn't know like I would go there and I'd be like 
good lord, my bill is so fucking expensive. That like oh, okay. versus yeah. like A and P and Shoprite and Stop and Shop or whatever. It's like it's like I can't afford to eat the best foods, you know. And when especially yeah. if you're talking about meat stuff. You had no access to bison or elk or oh, yeah. any of these ostrich, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you couldn't get that stuff. There was no, like, you got bright orange salmon that, that said right on it, color added. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what you could buy if you wanted salmon. And now I feel like you can go, I can get non-dairy cheese, non-dairy sour cream, non-dairy milk, like 15 different kinds of non-dairy milk. I can get salmon straight from alaska if that's what i want sure. i can get like stuff and it's not crazy expensive like it's yeah made, that's made a huge difference in the quality of what like the quality of what you can get has gone up while the price has gone down you know yeah. what I mean? over the past 20 years I, you know yeah i i think it's i have a a, a my perspective comes out of retail a little bit because as you all know I've, mm -hmm. I've worked in retail over 15 years, co-owned the store over 10 years, um, and I, 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 I'm, it was it was a little more hidden, I guess. There's a cultural thing going on too, though, and we talk about this all the time. That the folks, because um, I was pretty poor as a student, and I, I think we probably all have checked off the poor box a few times. <laughs> but, but but there's something though about um, a can of beans is always really really cheap. Yes, you know, and, and once I once I got to where I was making things like lentil soup, just salad, grab a bag of apples, get, you know, wait till black beans are on sale and get, you know, a dozen cans for 83 cents each or whatever it would be. Um, yeah. But but you're right in that the restaurant thing and going out and, and the Whole Foods thing, that whole upcharging of this food that people around the world yeah. eat because it's inexpensive. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a strange upcharge, you know. Um, I want to talk about some favorite foods too as people travel. Now, Joe, you, you, um, Joe, what's the name of the, the, um, you have Eastern Potato was, of course, many years. Is that band still happening? It is. We are actually working on another record through the pandemic okay. in a very odd, like, okay, I'm going to drop box this and this is what we did. The last time we recorded <laughs> was probably about a year ago. Okay. Um, but working on a record and uh, actually, one of our singers is actually now playing with Jason Bonham. Oh, really? So uh, we asked Glenn if he'd be interested in singing on some of the stuff. So if I can pull it together with mixing and blah, 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 and all the stuff that goes on with that, you know, maybe we'll get a record together again with that. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, still sharing cool. ideas. And of course, Antar has played with John. And what a wonderful. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Cat to play with. So. Oh, yeah. John, uh, John, who, John which Hummel. Sorry. John, John Hummel is yeah. a drummer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Eastern Potato. Yeah, so. Yeah, he's great. He's fantastic. I've had the four good fortune of playing with the kid since he was 17 years old and I was 21. So wow. that, that was a lifetime ago. Um, yeah. And now I am doing a Parrot Beach, and that is a Jimmy Buffett tribute. All right. And that's for this will be year twenty two. So I was, from a background gonna, of like from Kiss to Yes to Rush to Zeppelin to Fusion <laughs> to Jimmy all Buffett. My friends were like, We're in a Jimmy Buffett tribute band, what's the matter? With you? Are you okay? <laughs> but now have you found that that band has gotten more popular as time has gone on? I will say yes, and there's a couple of reasons, I think. I think, one, because Jimmy Buffett is an incredible tunesmith and reaches a huge audience of people. So the, the mm -hmm. music is very user-friendly for Grandma to, to Junior, who just got here as a newborn. So you're not yeah. alienating anybody. Everybody gets it from all ethnicities <laughs> because there's a little Caribbean, a little island. It's, it's all very <laughs> and, and it's – I'm sorry. It, it's what, Parrot Beach, like the bird? It's called uh, – uh yeah, what is the name of the band? Parrotville. <laughs> Parrotville. Okay. No, it's not Parrotville, because it was Parrotville. <laughs> now, now you got. Now I'm. Now I'm done. I'm looking. I, well, I'm just seeing. It's the summer. <laughs> I'm. I'm just seeing if there's I've a. Been in it for 22 years. I'm gonna actually look it up. 
Yeah, I have to see if there's a video. Well, because I like to, you know, give people a little taster. But what what I do have is this really cool video. Let's look for a second at some Dr. Albans, which is uh, again one of the many bands uh, Jerome was in. And and I want to hear Parrot about Beach, sorry. what you're recording right now. Sorry, Jerome. Sorry. Par Parrot Beach. Oh, Par Parrot Beach show. Okay, great. Um, I'll come. Let, let's jump back to. Let's go to Dr. Albans. Because when I come, I come, I come wrong. In the rag and rag, I'm up in business. Come, 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 come. Steinberger. Yep, of course. Still play Steinberger. Hip hop, reggae, in our dance all star. 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 Oh, that bass. Oh, if I girl. That's great. That's, yeah, infectious groove. I hear the, the slightest. Oh man, I hear there's the slightest nod to uh, "Beds Too Big Without You." On oh that. yeah, I mean it was like sampled. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> the line was sampled from that. The second half, of that line. but that was great. But now that you, now that now that we played that, yes, I remember Dr. Alban. You know, just in passing, like, oh, you hear a track. Well, I mean, down on the islands, he was big, is big still. Um, but getting back to the positive hip hop thing, if anything, Alban can be credited with being the guy that brought the positive message to Euro techno. If I mean, he was basically the artist that defined Euro techno. Um, but all the tracks, everything was all like positive, no drugs, no violence, you know, peace on earth. Uh, the whole book, very, very positive message. And speaking of Philadelphia, I'm working with a, a Philadelphia based DJ now w writing new material for Alba. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we're planning to try to have a go at uh, a revival. Oh, it's so, great. Yeah. Great. Uh, so <clears throat> whenever we can. I'm well, sorry, I, I gotta say, man, that was that was super dope. Yeah, that was a great, thanks. That was, super dope. that was a great that was a great groove, and that video was really good. Like like the style yeah. of it, it had this kind of '80s thing going, but it was like, well, this was not, the '80s. <laughs> it was yeah, the '80s. Just in. it wasn't. But you know how you know how you can look at some '80s stuff and just kind of shudder, like, oh god, uh, what are you trying to? <laughs> this this holds up, man. This is like, yeah. Like, Dope Again, video. this was this was literally one of the biggest acts in the world that was never heard of in the U.S. So, you know, of course, the major label, major label backing, major label funding. Um, there, there are tons of videos online. Yeah. You know, production videos. They're all you know, top notch. Sure. Um, Where were you all based? What was the based in Stockholm? Based in Stockholm. So yeah, you, you tour out from there. Yeah, the um, you know, it's it, you know, we could talk just about bands that that don't click in the u.s i was reading about one the other day this um and and this one has a little bit of awareness um but not in people our age um the, the this this korean boy band i forget their name right now but what was anyone oh, yeah it, it, well the whole k-pop movement in general it's just yeah, yeah it's but there's crazy. one who the, the, the numbers just completely yeah. redefine your understanding of reality uh, bts or something like yeah, that yeah, BTS. 
right? Have, yeah. Did you have? They are known, but not by parents. Yeah, I, I don't. I couldn't put pick out a song of theirs in a lineup. Yeah, they're but I they're know the name. so huge, man. Yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, yeah. if you're a female under the age of nineteen, you know every one of their songs. Like, yeah, yeah. Just and, with, and, without a doubt. And and I I saw them do something acoustically where they're just singing a cappella. Mm. Nailed, nailed it. Nailed, oh, that's like, the real deal. That's you know, and, and that, real, really talented. Yeah. Wait, does that, are you talking about the show they did with Paul McCartney on TV? Yeah. They yeah. they were on like some talk show with Paul McCartney, and they sang yesterday. I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was just remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's a funny change because we grew up in the era of these kind of manufactured bands where no one knew a C chord. But but it's funny. Uh, people can laugh and people can say whatever they want. But Justin Bieber's a badass on drums, on piano, on guitar, and if, he plays it all, right? He's actually a good musician. Uh, you know, uh, Billie Eilish and her brother write this music. They know how to play this BTS band. You know, um, a, a number of other ones I could think. You know, uh, you know, Ed, Ed Sheeran. You know, good guitarist. So you so you have this new thing uh, where Katy Perry you know, people are writing. They know how to operate these instruments. When thirty years ago it was. A mixed bag and and um yeah. so these these young gentlemen too yeah i've heard some tunes and i go wait th that's their voices or <laughs> you know they're playing those instruments speaking um, of other african artists that are massive outside of the u.s i'm yeah. just wondering do any of you know about morikante yeah okay for morikante yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, did you play with them or, or no no morikante never played with um I mean, we did festivals on the same bill kind of thing, but I, you know, that's, that's another one that I just, sure. I've never met anyone here until you today. Right. Who even knew his name. And it's just remarkable because Morikante is just so incredible. And sure. I can't understand how, you know. Well, you know, there's, there's a whole, but oh, oh, there's so many artists, Miriam McKay, Hugh Masekela, who just died like two years yeah, ago. Yeah, Hugh Masekela. But Can't we knew Hugh Masekela when we were kids in the '60s. You know, right? yeah, a lot, a lot of people still miss it. But, but, uh, but for me, the the two uh, uh, that were central for me in the '80s, growing up, um, Fela and King Sunny a day. Yeah, like, yeah, I got to see King Sunny, but I never saw Fela. But, um, but, but, and then those artists led me to other people, um, Al Haji Baikante and, and and you know Yusu Endur, of course. Yeah, well, I must heard of him first when Gabriel started touring with him. But yeah, people go down that rabbit hole. There's, there's, there's these huge festivals happening around the world when they can happen. And uh, this is some of the music. Let me just see if there's uh, some questions here. Um, let's go back to, um, let's see. Um, I'm on dual, yeah. Uh, let's see. Frank Lacey, thank you for putting that up there, Raymond Helfers. So, so there's a Wikipedia link for Frank Lacey. Trombone player, composer. Man, his band blew yeah. me away in the mid '80s. I, you know, you know those th those those things you can remember in life where you remember that you just your jaw just dropped. And because Frank Lacey had this like eight piece band, and I think four of them were horns, and it was like it was like rock funk fusion riffs played on the horns. This tight harmony shit happening, and him soloing on the trombone. Never heard anything like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and if you look him up, he's isn't he a professor somewhere now? North yeah, Carolina? he's he's at one of those music schools in Manhattan. And Manhattan. actually, this this band that I've been doing with um, Ronnie Barrage and Michael Gregory Jackson was originally the band is called Flow Sonic. Originally, it was a band called Black, and it was a trio with Ronnie, Frank, and myself. Okay. And unfortunately, that was very short lived. Um, and it's really sad because that that was like my idea from the beginning, you know, to have like a, a trio with Frank and no chord instrument. I was going to say, what, so, yeah. that, so, so that was bass, trombone, and what else? And drums. Like, wow, that's good. Well, not just drums, Ronnie Barrage. You see, that's on a whole other <laughs> level. <laughs> it's not, you know, you know. I don't know him, but sounds. You yeah. don't know Ronnie Barrage? No, I don't. Yeah, How would I know? Like from what group? Is he in New York? guy or wow ronnie barrage is probably one of the top five drummers in the mainstream jazz thing like you know he's drummer of mccoy tyner uh, um pharaoh sanders 
Uh, I mean, the, the list is I way too long to, to go through. And he has his own band called Holographic Principle that are yeah. they're awesome. doing streaming concert, uh, I think, on the 25th of this month, if I'm not mistaken, out of okay. Baltimore. Yeah. No, this I, guy, I, is, he's an iconoclast. He's a, you know, he's just ridiculous. Sure. Um, I just um, I bookmark that. I love this because I, I, I try to learn something new every day. And um you know, uh, there you go. No, I, I, I've heard him because I've heard some of those artists. Yeah, you've heard, you've definitely heard him. Living didn't, legend. Didn't know the name, but um, no, the the trombone and and it's tough to find a good trombone player. Um, mm. we we did a tour with uh, Colin, another great bass player, Colin Hutchinson. You know that name? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. He had the band Backdoor in the early seventies. Mm -hmm. Played with Jan Hammer. Played with White Snake actually. And uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, Robin and I toured with him. Uh, he's in. 10 years after the last decade or so mm -hmm. and uh we were talking about trombones and he goes ah oh, trombone the guessing stick obviously <laughs> 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 never heard frank in that er, in that in that early oh. english way and, and he he went on to say of course there's good ones but when you get a bad one andre <laughs> <laughs> guessing <yeah. laughs> i think that's the note um so Joe, tell us. We're gonna let's go to to the circle and tell us a little bit. What's your favorite food? Like, what's your go-to? Where you're like, man, I, here's my favorite kind of veg thing that I've discovered. Is it a a meal or a cuisine or what? It, what do you like? It's usually, it's usually a meal, and I'm usually up for anything as long as it's hearty. So it could be like a chili-based thing, but okay, let's throw every vegetable and their mother in it uh, um so yeah i don't have a specific I, I i always look um for for something new uh my my staple is uh god bless my my dad is still with us and he still makes a killer chili um and he will even make it meatless for me That's so good. um that that is probably close to being my favorite but i've been really going into the breakfast um or i should say smoothie type thing so lately my favorite has been blueberries pineapple bananas turmeric chives cloves cinnamon almond milk pomegranate juice flaxseed and oatmeal wow, wow. powerhouse and, and so do that and my my blood sugar is <laughs> this and I, I've never had anything. I I talk about food anymore as I used to talk of drugs. It's like this is the <laughs> most amazing freaking wow, you know, thing I have had because I'll I'll take it and I'm like, and there is no crashing. There's no like, oh, I'm starving. Oh, I need to, eat. and then I go on to have my next meal. So that has been quite good for me. And I never knew that I could take steel cut oatmeal and not cook it. Sure. And, blend uh -huh. and I was like, no kidding. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> that has been my new, uh, I, I, I'm not really the meal guy. I'm right. like, okay, I'm going to have this because it tastes good. And I guess I don't need to have a steak or a sandwich or, you know, breakfast cereal. I guess I can just combine it throughout the day and feel the way I feel. And all right. So that's, that's my new journey. That's great, man. That 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 reinforces to me that I have a shake once in a while, but I really got to get back on, you know, most days, you know, because if you're right, if you do it right, it powers you through, you know, and and then you have one other meal. When I was on that level, it'd be a shake and a meal and something light, some fruit and tea, and then you're done, and you don't feel hungry. That's the key. Uh, um, uh, Antar, what, what's your, fi you know, is there a favorite where you're like, man, I could eat that? most days a week do you have something like that yeah i mean i don't eat the same thing every day but close enough like a, a very small variety i suppose i definitely do like the oatmeal i cook it you know old-fashioned that way but like i cook it with raisins with some kind of fruit raisins bananas walnuts almonds stuff flaxseed hemp seed and i mix all that stuff in for breakfast i'll have some kind of smoothie thing for lunch, something like that. But my favorite is the, I don't know what it's, how you, it's tofu pasta with okay. sure. the, with uh, pesto, with like the, the 
pine nuts, olive oil, garlic, and uh, um, the nutritional yeast powder, that kind of pesto like that mixed yeah. in. Oh, that's the best. That's a great that's texture. <laughs> that, that is my, that's one of my favorites. That's one of my big go-tos or some kind of burrito with some yeah. kind of like, you know, some chili with some tofu wrapped up and some brown rice or something, you that, know, that's that, that I love also. That's a musician's friend right there, burrito, because you yeah. it back in, a bite, wrap it up, stick it back in the backpack, right? You, you know, it, it's, exactly. it's very friendly. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm torn. It's probably, it, it's somewhere between Mediterranean Thai, but then, then I go, well, what about Indian and Mexican? Yeah. But you know, somewhere <laughs> in that range. But I, I could yeah. do Thai. I could do Thai at any time, man, because it's, it's so fresh. And yeah. then there's a lot of raw things, you know. Um, how about you, Ben? Is there? Do you have a, something that you? What, what's kind of a, a go-to? Because you've been well, doing, Ben. Let me just tell people, Ben and I have had this this photo exchange. Ben Ben's been doing a lot of cooking and sending these wonderful meals. But to tell us if you have like a favorite, you know, area. Man, it's it's hard to pick. Um, I, you know. I, I just split up with my girl not so long ago. She was an amazing chef and she was really creative. And so for, for a few years, I had life really good. <laughs> I mean, she like was like one of the best vegetarian vegan chefs I've ever experienced. So I was like, life is good. But of course, all the good things must come to an end. So now I have, I've had to step into that void. And I got this thing. I've been showing Andre these pictures. It's called Purple, Purple Carrot, which is um, a delivery service, uh, which is all, all vegan. And they, you know, I get a box on a Tuesday and it's got, I, you can get as many as you want. You can order whatever you want. You can narrow it down for whatever you need. But I get like three bags that each one of them is a meal. Everything is in it that you need, but you have to, you still have to prepare it. It's not like a lot of these ones are just take it out and put it in the microwave. Sure. It's not like that. If this is just really good, organic, high-end vegan um, meals that you have to prep and cook, but man, oh my God every time i make something it's just like better than the last time and they're they're constantly changing the menu so you never like almost never i've been doing it for since june and i i've almost never i've gotten something that's a direct repeat you know they're always they're very creative um uh, meals and they take about 40 minutes uh 50 minutes to, to make all together for a dinner but man <laughs> oh, here's one of yeah. the things you sent me oh yeah yeah, nice. yeah definitely Arugula and mm. uh, you know some sweet potato. Is that butternut squash? That, yeah, no, uh, yeah, that's a squash, mm -hmm. and with with actually with grapes. That one, it's see, they're all about the sauces, and that's what I've learned from this experience. It's all about the sauce. What mm -hmm. you put your food, what you make your food. I mean, and they're so creative. They have all these different yummy ingredients that I would never think of. Like, what? Putting that with that? What? What? But yeah. but when you're done, you're like, oh my god, yeah, that. There's that, <laughs> there's that taste that I know and love. It, you know, they'll do something, you know, that, that makes you feel like you're right in, you know, a Mediterranean restaurant or right in a, you know, I've had this Chinese kind of flavors that they, everything completely vegan, but you don't miss uh, the taste is is insane. They're yeah. really high end. Like every time I, I, it's for two people. So I have a house man. I'm like, I don't want to eat it all because I will. I'm like, come on, dude, can, join me. And every time he's like, whoa, dude, this is like next level. I'm like, yeah, I know. This is incredible. So I'm really grateful for, I've learned so much about cooking, about preparing, com combining ingredients to that's make right. interesting flavors. And man, you would, it, that's, I wanted to say this. It's been on my mind since we started this conversation. To me, like one thing I learned about uh, eating raw for as long as I did is that humans basically they don't you don't lose your taste like spectrum, right? We all have this taste spectrum sure. from things that taste horrible to things that are just orgasmically delicious, right? And it stays the same no matter what you put in it. So it like that's the key thing. Like you the what I learned by into my second or third year raw was I get a piece of lettuce and I think this is the most delicious piece of romaine I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's true. It's like your body you enhance brain, that, yeah. It sharpens. It, it, it just your brain, your brain doesn't change in, in its ability to. So yeah, people are worried about limiting their taste. That's the biggest kind of uh, stumbling block I find with people looking at vegetarian or vegan 
right. um, done because they, they think to themselves, oh, but I can't taste, give up my tastes, my yeah. yumminess. I don't get you it. Know? Uh, and, yeah. and, and that's that's the that's the thing that you can't communicate. You can only experience. That's why, uh, Antar, I really appreciated your suggestion about just taking someone to a restaurant, sitting yeah. them down, paying for the food, and letting them experience it. You don't say anything. Yeah. It's because because it's once someone's in, it's in their brain, they actually experience tasting how freaking delicious vegan and vegetarian yeah. food can be. Then they start letting go of their fears just a little bit by a little bit. Like, oh, wait a minute. This is something that tastes really delicious, yeah. you know, and it just it, it battles their brain that goes, oh, no, the fear of <laughs> but, and, and, You know, like, what's so interesting about what you just said is wouldn't it be more scary to slaughter an animal and then cook it over a fire and, to pick <laughs> plant and put it in your mouth? Yeah, <laughs> me, it's it's like it. I, honestly, I, 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 I'm with you there, but I, for, it's been years and years of being kind of like a diplomat from the vegan community to other people. I've kind of learned to, that that certain going down certain pathways tends to push people away more than pull them in. And that's the only thing. For me, it's like an essential because I'm like hardcore environmentalist. That's like my thing. So like to me, I'd rather pull someone in, you know, giving them something positive to go toward than, you know, try to push them away from something. I'm in that total agreement with you. I, yeah. I just came upon the realization, though, that eating yeah. flesh, to me, if you think about it, just preparing it from from ground to mouth is scarier than, than yeah. just picking a, a plant up and eating it. But yeah, what, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, it's totally. But that's uh, that goes into the whole block. Everyone has this blocking thing that we do to, to stay <laughs> clean yeah. and like you know, to kind of block, we block out the fact there's a ball of nuclear explosions above us all the time in the sky. But we, you know, it's a lovely sunny day. You know, there's things that we do to process, to process you know? It's like, the, so, so, but it's the same thing. Like for me, if I have to go down that way, if I have to kind of shock someone, I'll say, well, look, if you're driving down the road and you're in your car and you're hungry, you're feeling a little hungry, and it's a nice country road, on the one side, there's some cows off in the field, and the other side, there's an apple tree. Now, is your first instinct to pull over, get out of your car, jump over the fence, run, jump on the cow, sink your teeth in it, bring it down, and gorge? Yeah. <laughs> or is your first instinct to go pick an apple and have a nice little apple? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's my always my response to people say, we're carnivores. I'm like, hmm. I don't think so. There's, <laughs> there's there's a, a bunch of great points there. And and yeah, I, I usually make that point to people too. The um and I'll say similar things. I'll say if a rabbit went by, would you first off, could you catch it? I doubt it. <laughs> and, and and the rabbit will fuck you up if if, if you oh, if you think, you know, you're gonna bite into it. So there's a whole narrative there. But but I think it, it's about reading people, right. And and I think um what you're both saying is, is applicable where it depends on the person. If it looks like the, if it looks like you can get a little leeway, then maybe you can say something like, you know, um, hey, would would you, you know, would you see <laughs> like your dog on the um, on on that uh, on that grill? Um, so many good points here, and and, and um, you know, one of the ones too that that someone said um, is this how uh, people say, well, I don't want to limit myself, and I always find that funny because. Um, and I know several people I've gotten this, this discussion with where um, I'm just looking for a picture while I'm talking where the where they'll say that. And, I, and I, I've toured with people who are, don't have an easy time that that's what's funny, too. I'm not bugging them at all. They say something every day. I'm sure you've <laughs> all had friends like that, right, where you've never said a word. But every time they sit with you, they got to make a comment or whatever. But 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 some of the folks that that that, that always say, well, it's limiting. And I'm around them for six weeks, and I look, and I go, wow, wow. I've had something different every day on this tour, for instance. Let's say we're on with some band. And this person has eaten a piece of chicken breast every single day. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all have people like that. It's either chicken breast or the steak once a week, oh, and then maybe a pork chop and, and turkey sandwich. Like, how many people do we know where that's it? That's kind of most of their week. Spaghetti and meatballs because it's Saturday, and then, but it's really like six things that go around, and they all have, you know, chicken that's either fried or roasted, or so. I, I think that that's just a humorous aside that that there's this there's this fear of limitation. Meanwhile, we're out there finding, you know, going from this coconut curry to that baba ganoush to that 
vegan red bean pie to this Jamaican, you know, patty to that, you know, uh, um, you know paella. Yeah. With I, I, no. I feel like my, my palate expanded exponentially yeah. when I started. Because it's like I would not have really tried Thai food because I just would have gotten Chinese food. Right. With a bunch of like, I had gotten some chicken fried rice or some beef fried rice and called it a day and not even yeah. thought about it or gotten some kind of meatball sub or, or pizza or whatever it is. Turkey sandwiches was a big one. Like in New Brunswick, right over to MV Deli, get myself a turkey sandwich and like the things were like the size of your head. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, and the, but then you go vegetarian and all of a sudden it's true you're eating much more internationally i find do you if know what you mean? Look like, around. Like, there, there's you some know, people like, that, like there's just you know yeah there is uh, jerome how about you you've been around the world man i mean living in thailand i'm envious you've been all around and i, I remember through the years getting emails or, or finding out like wait a minute wait a minute where are you <laughs> and, and people say that to me so, so but tell us if you do do you have like something that Man, that is my food. What's okay. your favorite? I have to, this is the, listen. Um, okay, I'm gluten-free. I don't eat soy. Um, so like when I was a kid, you know, like in Japan, there was like soy, everything is soy. Mm -hmm. So I, I overdid it with that when I was little. Um, and then recently my doctor, I mean, I always knew that soy could be tricky. My doctor like really nailed it. He he was just like, you know, just stay the stay away from soy. Just there's no reason to eat it. So um I I've not been doing any of that. Now that being said, my favorite food has always been um just a, a big bowl and just throwing raw greens into it, you know. Just I, you know, I buy these boxes of raw greens and seeds and whatnot. And Usually, like just an olive oil and and some lemon, you know. Um, sometimes I'll try to get creative and, and make like a, a type of dressing or a sauce or something. Um, but still, that's always been like my absolute favorite. Um, the great thing with living in Sweden and in Norway is <laughs> that they have these grocery store chains um, in Sweden. It's Konsum. Well, actually, it's pretty much all grocery store chains now. But Konsum and Ika. They, they have these, these salad bars, you know, these salad buffet bars that are just like, <laughs> just out of the, you know, out of this world. And you just go in there and they, you know, they have these paper bowls and you just fill them up, you know, with ingredients. Amazing. And it's, it's cheaper than going to like a fast food restaurant and the, and the quality of the food, it's, it's just, it's all fresh produce, you know, because these are still essentially agrarian countries, you know, so you're, you're just like, they also have the same thing in Ireland, you know, so the food is just, it's incredible. And it's, and it's my favorite food and my favorite way to eat. So that's, yeah. <clears throat> no, that, that's a great answer. And that, you know, I, um, I, that, yeah, that's pretty close for me too, man. A giant bowl, <coughs> excuse me, with, yeah, just lettuce arugula or whatever and just whatever vegetables i'm there and that's what i really loved about raw foods too is that i i that was a that was my daily a giant bowl an avocado or two in there and yeah. just really get all the calories raw so that's um that's great tell us a little bit of a music project what you're doing right now what what people can where can people find you by the way your, your instagram right yeah, I'm on Instagram. I have a website. Okay, uh, what's, the, what's the what's the link? Yeah, I'll I'll put the link in the chat. Okay. Um, and let's see, is that it, actually it shouldn't be capitalized? I hate these okay. um, these things. Yeah, but um, what am I working on now? Well, the thing that I'm most excited about right now is this virtual project that I'm doing with Bob Muso and Grant Calvin Weston. Great. And um. A cast of thousands. I mean, we're we're getting tracks or contributions to tracks, basically from from people like all over the world uh, that you know we work with. Um, some really really great music is going down, and it's this first album. It's it's kind of a it's it's more of a like jazzy kind of thing, 
Okay. Um, not as out as the other material that I'm working on that's also slated for release, all, all on Muso Music. Okay. Um, the last release I did for Muso Music was um, this collaboration with Bob Ostertog called Motormouth Deviations, which was based on his, his Motormouth recordings, the, the Buchla recordings that he did uh, some years back. And um, basically I took those and I added more Buchla and more Surge and more madness to them and called it Motormouth Deviations. Um, but that's that's on Muso Music. Okay, and, and, and on your site, uh, Jerome.com, people can find links to this and, and over to... Yeah, and other things like the the great mystery album, Coalef, is on that site. And, oh, great. Um, but what I've been getting into now, mostly uh, just as a way of keeping up with people, is, you know, trying to get into live streaming on Instagram and right. Facebook. Facebook and YouTube and mm -hmm. you know, going that route because I'm, I'm pretty homebound here. So not a whole lot of gigs. You are. We, we've all been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah it, we feel you. Yeah. A lot of that going around. Yep. A lot of that going around. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. You know, I, I have the space and the the resources to be able to, to do stuff. So yeah. I'm just trying to take advantage of it now. <clears throat> No, it's what, what a few things to unpack there. First off, that's great to hear, and I put your website links up. Really happy to um, to see there's some future music coming, because I'm all about here's the here and now, folks. We're moving forward. The past is 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 incredible though, and it's especially I always say if I haven't heard it, it's brand new to me, right? It it just came out today. If I didn't hear it, people don't. So I'm always listening to shit. You know, I listened to a track the other day. Um, from uh patty labelle uh it was the blue bells in 1962 did you know that 62 yeah so she had some 62 yeah. i know i know some labelle 70s stuff and i know there's so many great songs 62 so so she you know her and nona hendrix doing stuff in the in the 60s um so so it was brand new to me so i i, I love that um you're doing new stuff. I urge people to go check out things you've done and, and check out everyone here. But but let's talk for a second about our dear friend, Bob Muso, Robert oh, Muso. Yes. Now, let me set it up for folks here. Folks, y you know, you saw that quick clip before Machine Gun, which was such a formative band for me. Um, I was getting into playing guitar, and I, I discovered um, a few years in, I discovered – the noisier side of things because of Machine Gun. Seeing a band like that and realizing, wait a minute, they're not coloring inside the lines. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's supposed to be a, a riff and then a B section and then a bridge. And then, what's going on here? And, and I was just listening to Coltrane and all this. So it was so important to see, see you all play. It really was. And then Sonny Chirac. Yeah. I learned about that and, and he played with Machine Gun. So in the midst of all this, I'm also learning about Bill Laswell, who has all these great records, you know, the PIL and all that stuff came out. Herbie Hancock, Rocket. Remember yeah. that track? And I'm hearing all this amazing music. And this man I'm talking about has something to do with all of that. His name is Robert Muso, mm -hmm. Bob Muso. And if you're serious, folks, about being a musicologist, studying music, studying everything I just mentioned, and also Tony Levin and the, the Scopolitis and... and you know, Buckethead, any of these people you could name, Bernie Worrell, everyone I just named looked through the control window at one point, and pretty much every Bill Laswell record, they looked through that control window and they said, there's Bob Muso. This motherfucking record is going to sound great. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's who Bob Muso is. You tell us about Bob Muso now. Well, I mean, he's probably one of the top five engineers in the world. Um, he and Bill Laswell worked together, you know, steadily for 30 years, producing this legendary body of work that we've all heard more than enough. There, there's, you know, we'd have to say anything about that. Um, he's a very innovative and brilliant guitarist. He's the first person to professionally record Whitney Houston. True. Wow. Yeah. With material, but right? That. Yeah, it was yeah, well sure. actually no, it was a Pharaoh, it was a Pharaoh Sanders date, actually. Oh, right. It was a Pharaoh Sanders date. She sang, she was a feature on a, a Pharaoh Sanders track. But um, yeah, he's he's just this this 
great visionary, um, amazing artist, uh, genius. Uh, you know, there, there are stories, there are things that we've all heard that if you knew the Bob Muso backstory, you know, it's, wow. Yeah. yeah he's, he's quite the man. So um, what we've been doing is that, um, you know, cause he's, he's like an amazing guitarist. He's also started playing piano. He's, he's going to be featured on piano on at least one of the tracks on one of the titles that are coming up. Um, he's, you know, he's, playing just not playing guitar he's just doing remarkable things with guitar i mean it's, sure. you'll hear th sounds on these albums and you'll be like wow that's an interesting orchestra treatment it's just him on guitar you know right yeah uh, it, you know sonic uh, architect yeah uh, <clears throat> and i i put the um i put the link there folks and, and you know just just go down that rabbit hole. There's so many records that he plays on. That's the thing. When does this guy sleep? Bob, when do you sleep? Because, because he's producing. When you're, when you're producing, you're never sleeping already, right? I mean, you're, yeah, he's, you're editing stuff. You're pulling together all these different formats over the years. and you're, It's a tireless job. And he's an engineer. He's the engineer in that studio. And he has some assistants now. But, I mean, what an what a inspiring gentleman because after all that, to still have a band the whole time, right? 30, 40 years. Yeah. Of, or 40 years of, of Machine Gun and different things. Time um, flies. You know, but, but people need to check him out. And you saw him for just a minute there. Um, mm. And he still looks exactly the same, except his hair is white. Yeah, yeah, like all of us. Yeah, it's, it's, like all of us. You know, um, let me jump back to Facebook here. Um, uh, let's see if there's any questions. Multiple lifetimes. That's right. Yes, Neil Alexander. Yes, wildlife. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't remember the title for a second. Th that's jumping back to the the um, Tony Williams song. Um, someone says they live on coffee and chocolate with a side of tobacco. Okay, that's great. Right oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, I'm it's true. Though. True. Um, composting. <laughs> it. And let me remind people. Yeah, it's all about. Psh, Grow your own food, folks. Spring is coming up. We're starting to um, to do some things. That was Jerome on bass on, on those videos we played. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Thank you for the Ronnie Burge. Um, aren't the mothers meat based? Uh, I'm sure they are, except for Don Preston. But that that's okay. That's not that's not the the thrust of the show. I um, I, I'd even have Ted Nugent on. That I always say that as a kind of joke, but no. If he said, "All right, I won't eat meat on a Monday, Andre. I'll come on your show," so I'm I'm open to everything. So, um, see, any questions there, folks? Um, let's see. Blah 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 blah. Just people saying they love the food talk and love spinach. Uh, Van de Graaff generator, love them. Uh, I just interviewed Judge Smith recently. Um, I've been on a project with um, Guy Evans for the last year or so now. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, you're. You know, that, that's why I, I haven't checked your site out. I've been looking at your Instagram, and that's educational enough, but I'm going to have to dig into your site where I can, I can learn some of these other things that you've been doing. Yeah, I should um, be more aggressive about that, actually. Uh, <laughs> Ray, Ray, <laughs> Ray Helfers points out that Bob Muse has produced, mixed, remixed, played on, or contributed to over 2,000 records, CDs, and movie soundtracks. Yeah, easily. Yeah. He is, um, yeah, yeah one, of, one of those people. So... Um, so, so, okay, so people can find out what you're doing there. Joe, you're, you're, musically, you said some Eastern Potato. That's very exciting. Is there an Eastern Potato website? Not really. Not right now. Okay. But people can find you on Facebook, Joe Howell on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I, can... I actually, I've um, pretty much stepped away. Not that I'm not on it. Um, no. I've been more voyeuristic, mm -hmm. especially um, after I saw what the last um, – administration seem to be doing to all of my friends. I don't care which way you affiliated. Right, right. right. That's there was, there was just a lot of negative energy. Sure. Um, so I just kind of sat back and just, you know, it's like, well, here's a little rascals thing. Do you find that amusing? <laughs> to make you feel better? Because I think that's what we're all about anyway. Sure. Um, Homer Simpson disappearing into the <laughs> right. It, and also um, doing a lot of uh, video editing for other folks. So I've jumped off the stage pretty much. Um, and as we were chatting last week, uh, 
just trying to figure a way to redefine what I do. Sure. So being of the age that I am, I don't know if I feel like starting. I yeah, know. yeah, you know, yep. Um, being on the road, sleep, making less money and, and having to do that stuff. So uh, working from home, being in the machine, I can do anything. It's, you, you know, do. there's something beautiful about it. I just pull up pictures. You're doing one of these, I think, right? You're just, <laughs> <laughs> when, it, when it comes to Facebook, at least. I, I hear you. No, it, it's, I know, right? It's, for me, it's just music. And, and and this sort of thing, and you know, every four to six weeks, I'll allow myself a slight political comment. But people who know me knew that I'd be on there, you know, every two days with something political. Five years ago, six years ago, even three years ago. But yeah, it just got to zero communication level. And mm -hmm. I love that you said, "Doesn't matter the side." Yeah, it, just a different blast of of stupidity. One side, I, I don't like. We're not equating those sides. One side is obviously, you know, endorsing a, a lot of fascism. And I, I think the most of, harmful the stupidity thing, on the other side of just, you know, the sorry. The most harmful thing of it all is being American, our government is supposed to work for us, not have us be like, okay, yeah, and you, and that guy. And it's like, wow, okay, that public service thing just kind of went. Yeah. <laughs> It, went away. It, and that's unfortunate because if we as musicians did the exact same thing as our politicians did, people would be absolutely furious with us. True. They'd be like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, well, well I, I'm, I'm going to the beat of my own drama. And it's like, well, no. <laughs> right. No, damn it. You're supposed to be serving us. If I were in a Jimmy Buffett tribute band and started playing Frank Zappa lines, people would be upset. Sure. So, <laughs> There'd be one high guy in the back, though, that would go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're just stuck. <laughs> oh wait, that, that reminds me. Uh, before I forget again, Andre, where did you get the Matson Morgan T-shirt? Oh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, um, I pulled that out yesterday. Uh, friends of mine, I, I I know these guys. Um, but I got it when they played at a thing called the Prague House in Central Jersey. This guy Jim Robinson and some other folks put these progressive rock shows on. So mm -hmm. this was 97 or 96 or something. Cool. They came over. And, okay. um, but, but I've, I've, I've seen them many times since then. And uh, are, are you friends with them? Cause yeah, we, I mean, we've played together. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're, we're Stockholm guys. Well, they're really from outside of Stockholm. Sure. Um, but still, yeah, we worked together in Stockholm on and off over the years. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So we're buddies. You know, especially Morgan and I. But uh, yeah, no, the monster people. Anyone who doesn't know Mats and Morgan, that's another. Wow, two, just two genius players. I first discovered them because Zappa. Yeah, tell they, the Zappa story. Well, they came to a Zappa show as as young teenagers in nineteen. No, no, Mats was twelve. Uh, Mats was twelve. Oh, not even a teenager. Sorry, yeah. sorry. So twelve. And how much was Morgan? Like 13? Morgan was fourteen. I think. Okay, so so super young. And they somehow, as you do, passed the cassette to Frank Zappa uh, through a, a roadie or somebody. And, and so he's in uh, um, Sweden for a couple of days. And apparently he pops the tape in because it, 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 they were doing some Zappa on it. And he hears it. And apparently the next night or the, nec the night after. Yeah, the, the next show. Next show. They yeah. were there. And Frank got word. And he says, bring them up here. Come on up here. And has these kids sit in. Right? And, and of course, they destroyed the place. Yeah, I think they played in Shinda's Arf, I think. Oh, man. Which yeah. is, what a place to start. <laughs> and so, Frank, um, what a blessing. And, and that's it. Their career kind of started. This is, yeah. Well, people were just starting to, to send things to P.O. boxes and order m music direct from musicians and all that. <laughs> and so, it's a funny thing, though. I say that, and it's, it's for real. They, they actually, they're exactly the generation that has been DIY the whole time, you know? And I admire the two of them because um, uh, Mats is, uh, he was born blind. So he, he, he um, you know, overcoming that. As well, actually, the, musicians he, have. He, he was born sighted, but lost oh, his vision sorry. At, a, at a very early age, like six or something. Okay, my, my and, bad. And he started having hearing problems right. when he was in his 30s. Yeah. 
right? He's, he's just a, a miracle. Okay, he's, amazing. You know, yeah. any, anytime we complain, um, I apologize. I didn't realize he was cited at first, but he, um, the, the DIY thing though, that's inspiring. And that's something I always want to talk about with people because it kind of bridges the gap. We're artists, we're musicians, this whole plant-based thing. In all cases, it's taking control, doing it yourself, right? Not waiting for someone else, figuring the shit out. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to see more of that in this world, right? I mean, everyone's kind of looking Andre, for someone. I, to... I, would, I, would, I would venture to guess that everybody, all five of us, have done that our whole life. I mean, if you're a musician, that's what you do. And if you're a musician at the age of over 20 or over 25, yeah, <laughs> all of that stuff that they promised you, chicks, cars, wealth, blah, blah, that's all gone. Yeah. You're, you're like freaking chasing the next thing. It's like, I got to get the next thing. Right, right. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of, you know, but it doesn't, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I agree with you. We, and I think, I, I just was having this discussion. If we, the people get fed up, sick up and fed of everything and take it over and start growing our own food. And if everybody grew their own food, wow, everything would be okay. Cause we'd be too tired to fight at the end of the day. <laughs> and we'd be like, Oh wow, you have turnips. I have lettuce, you know, and <laughs> we are, we're buds, right? There's everybody's chipping in. A bunch of that, a bunch of that is already starting to happen, and and it should keep happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, how many how, uh, show of hands? Any of you gonna grow something uh, starting a month from now? Do you have the, the capacity to do that? I'm growing mushrooms for my dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's not necessarily nutritious. Okay. Oh wait, yeah. there's the other mushrooms. Yeah, the other mushrooms. Uh -huh. Wow, that's uh, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's, uh, <laughs> FBI. Well, that's, Pay pay close attention now. I'm in cinnamon. Son. <laughs> that's awesome. No, uh, um, well, well, that's uh, that, uh, I salute your dad. No mushrooms. I, uh, you know, um, wow, mushrooms. I was reading an article the other day, and then I saw Bill Gates on um, uh, something s Sunday morning. I love mushrooms. That's another area, and uh, I'm I'm gonna have a guy on here who does modular music with mushrooms. He. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw yeah. the clips about him last week, right? Yeah, Michael Lyko. He's a good friend of mine. He works at Make Noise Music, the synth company. Yeah. One of them. We have Moog also. But he's been doing this thing where he, he clips these um, electro se sensors on to living fungus who are sending out energy, as all living things do. And, and, and these, you know, <laughs> so they're playing music. So, so we're going to see that coming up. But Mushrooms. For the future, folks, what an incredible protein source, fiber, yeah. everything. And I forgot to mention this. Sometimes I do some news items. But Bill Gates, and here come the conspiracy theorists, but Bill Gates is <laughs> investing in a new mushroom-based yeah. company that's making – and they showed it on the show. Anderson Cooper was interviewing him, and Anderson tried. So they make a yogurt that's uh -huh. a, a mushroom-based uh, protein to, to make this – and um, and they make um, like a burger, kind of a, you know, like a meat meaty substitute kind of a thing um, to make whatever. And he, sh Bill Gates was at the factory with Anderson Cooper. And Bill Gates was saying, burgers, folks, I love them. We, we just had one, but we can't do it. We cannot sustain at the numbers at 7.4 billion. We, we also can't be, uh, the countries that are developing can't duplicate what we did. You know, it, it, we're, we're, it's, we're already in condition red, folks. The lights are flashing. So this is Bill Gates saying it. And I know there's going to be co some conspiracy theorists probably right on my page to say, I knew it. Bill Gates <laughs> wants us all to be vegetarians. And he, and then the chips will come out of the microwave. I don't know. But um, I think it's great. And I think it's great when someone that loaded realizes, you know what? I just write a check and I can enable an actual change here. Mm. So mushrooms are, are then there's that stuff corn have you guys had corn yeah corn yeah it's i i, I I've, it has eggs in it so i haven't had it but yeah. maybe i did once or twice in england it was okay a, a burger but um but i i know they have a vegan one now and i know they're they're kind of looking at making an organic version and all that um 
look, look, starting with you, Jerome, what's your take, and do you consume any of these, on kind of the explosion now of Bird's Eye, Green Giant, all these mainstream companies that are, that are doing vegetarian stuff and actually doing it with, with clean ingredients, you know? Yeah, I, I, wait, I have, a, I have a rule. I have a rule. Yeah? You do not eat anything that has a commercial. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's the rule. Okay, I, I respect I, that. Know, I mean, I'll go to Shoprite, which has like really nice produce, um, and I'll see that other stuff on the shelves. I I don't even I, I walk past it. I don't even pay sure, any sure. attention to it. Nah. Well, to be yeah. fair, to be fair, and I haven't had this at all. I have no dog in the fight, and I hardly buy this. Stuff, but to be fair, uh, I haven't seen a, a commercial for Green Giant cauliflower crust pizza, but they have one. That's so, interesting. Yeah, but because do you mean? I, I I know what you mean, and I'm with you, and I and I, I talk about this every week, and I'm wary. It's like here's Andre saying, "Go eat food from Nabisco." No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm but I'm I'm just kind of exploring that we've pulled them along, and and yes, it's marketing. Yes, it's twelve guys in a and, and gals in a board meeting looking at, at spreadsheets and stock markets. I get that. I'm I'm from the food business. Of course, it's driven by that. But they don't have to. They actually could just keep putting more butter in the meatballs and people <laughs> will buy those, right? Who wouldn't buy a meatball with melted cheese in the middle of it? Americans will. So, so there is something going on. Though, where where, where, where wow. Starbucks, Starbucks, is using, Starbucks is using Beyond Pork in their Asian locations. Did you, did you read about that? For this breakfast del delicacy in Hong Kong, Singapore. China. Yeah, they have a they have a whole experimental restaurant setup. You know, and, uh, which, um, but, but I hear you. I hear you, Jerome. We don't need to buy it, and I love your idea of like, nope, give me a bowl of fresh <laughs> live food. And yeah, uh, if you, you want to try something really fun, um, uh -huh. like one of my favorite things is, like you know, you can put quinoa in a salad, and that's like fun. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do sometimes when I really want to get exotic is I'll I'll slice up some mushrooms you know, like baby bellas and, and saute them with, you know, garlic and spices and everything and throw that on top of the salad. Sure. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm it, with you. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just fantastic. Just, just, yeah. Just wakes it up. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I, we cook, you know, 90% of what we eat, maybe even more, but I'll get like a, 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 a I have some tamales, for instance, I just found, this new company and it's all these vegan tamales wrapped in the corn, you know, very mm -hmm. classic. So I, I eat some things, but, but I'm, I do want people to, to know that, yeah, you don't want to fill your fridge with all this stuff. Um, but before I, 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 I get another thought on that, I wanted to just share this with people. If you haven't seen this, check this out. So green giant, huge company. They have a website called eatcallapower.com. They're calling it Callapower. Oh, ha, wait, ha. that pizza there in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah. That's what I'm having for dinner tonight. That's Green Giant? If huh. it, if it, if it, if it's the Power brand. Is that the brand? Callapower? Uh, I mean, a few people are doing a cauliflower crust now, so it might be. Yeah, because this, this one, the, I'm not sure if it's it, but it's with, it's with Daya cheese and... Um, Okay. Cauliflower based crust. You know, it's totally gluten and dairy free, like completely sure. vegan. Sure. Yeah. But, I, it looks, I, but the box looks the same. It that's, might be. It might be. You know, here's this is their site and this is. That's Green Giant? It's crazy, bro. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, you know, but here's the thing. You know, um, I think for all of us, we're readjusting our thing because we all grew up, we're all, uh, you know, within 10 years age. And um, <coughs> I think Antar is the young in here. But how old are you, Antar? 38. <laughs> 38? <laughs> Get out of here. No, he looks 33. But how old are you? He's a baby. Uh, 47. 47. That's great, bro. You, you have the baby face. 47. Good for you, man. But, but, but all of us have grown up with this thing of, uh, ah, fuck the corporations. And I largely still operate uh -huh. under that in general. I mean... And you're, you're not going to be wrong marching down that road. But I think it's an interesting time because Ben and Jerry's is a corporation and they're mm -hmm. filtering millions to children's programs. This and that. They now have, I think, five vegan ice creams. 
Did you see this? They have one for Colin Kaepernick. He's vegan. I didn't know that. They have a Colin Kaepernick one and all of the money. Like he's writing checks to, to uh, um, underprivileged youth, to black youth, college funds. So, so we're in an interesting place. And, of course, Bill Gates giving away. So you have these corporations now. And when you Google them, their CEOs are suddenly people our age. See, that's the part I hadn't thought about. I read an article about this. It was the New Yorker or Times. Uh, time, New York Times. And it was talking about that. And I said, you know, I didn't think about that. I'm 56. I'm not 18 or 22 anymore. So the people running the corporations, we're now getting marbled in there, our generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have people now at Coca-Cola or McDonald's or Starbucks who grew up with King Sonny a day or with listening to you know, world music or hearing about apartheid or hearing about, you know, and, and I, I think it, for me it's been a realization because usually it's like fucking corporations and I'm realizing, okay, once in a while, you know, so, so, so yeah, this is happening. So call of power is one of them. And then, um, the other, the other company is, um, uh, um, bird's eye. They have a whole bunch of, um, of stuff. I I've never bought it, but, um, I think it's exciting. Um, I, hey, Andrea, I gotta, I gotta say, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, we don't necessarily need that kind of company to tell us how to eat, but of what, but when they make a decision that, that is on such a large scale, see, that's the thing. Like when I think, when I find out like some place like McDonald's or something has an, a vegan option all of a sudden, like, I'm like, yeah, I hate McDonald's, but I'm, I celebrate their choices because you want to encourage them to make these choices because yeah. they, that one guy that goes to McDonald's and has a vegan burger, I mean, that times a gazillion. They have to order. Yeah. That, that's like acres and acres of rainforest that aren't going to be shut, you know, like, knocked down because of that one little corporate choice. So like every time we, you know, we take these big guys, these big corporations and we just continually give them support for making these decisions, the, the, the ramifications are so much bigger. I mean, I've, you know, that one guy in the corporate boardroom who made a decision to have a vegan burger at McDonald's made more positive impact on the planet than my entire like life of activism in reality, because like, it's on such a huge scale. Yes. That's what we forget. You know, it's a, the scale of destruction that these corporations do is so massive that if you can cut it back by even just a little bit, it's sure. a huge impact. That's right. It's like a it's like a a, a, a destroyer turning around or something. Uh, Joe, you were going to say to that? Was that, was that well, sure? what I was? I really wasn't. I was thinking something. I'm surprised it came across on Zoom. Um, <laughs> no, but the mere fact that when I was talking about um, us putting the pitchforks against each other and that corporate America now sees that people want to eat vegan. Could you imagine if corporate yeah. America saw that, wow, we just want to do better for the environment. Wow. We just yeah. want to do better as human beings. We yeah. want to treat our human, our fellow human beings better. Yeah. It's like, I mean, whenever I think about activism, my biggest thought is the bus boycott back in the 60s <clears throat> and yeah. how, how those folks walked for two years and financially shut the bus companies down to saying, all right, you guys can ride. Yep. It's, it's okay. You know, <laughs> and, and with that being said, here we are again, you know, it's yeah. money. It's driven by money, even though, you know, money is, I don't know what money is. It's sure. Different. Sure. It, it's absolutely. And it's, um, it, it it's definitely money, but but there is a piece in there where like I, I, and I'm joking around with the with the cheese filled meatballs, but the, they they could make this money on a bunch of other choices. I, I think this means there's there's now four people at the board meeting when there used to be one or something. There's a there's a little thing. The other thing to what Ben said about um about the availability and and, and they, we don't need them to tell us. Yeah, we're we're on this trip. But what I always picture is that. 16 year old vegetarian boy or girl 15 13 years old in indiana or utah or arkansas or some one of these places you know uh here in north carolina although we have a very heavy organic kind of a vibe but you know you're somewhere like that and 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 mom or dad only shops at the walmart and they only go here and there all of a sudden 
they're walking down the aisle and they oh, oh that says vegetarian my weirdo kid is doing that let me grab that <laughs> and i'm grabbing it i'm grabbing it because i trust the brand called bird's eye see so so if there's if this is the pathway in like here here's bird's eyes one of their new things buffalo cauliflower wings gluten oh, uh, yeah, this one does have gluten. Yep, yep. And I, I actually, you know, it might not, because I pretty much avoid gluten too. I'll, I have wheat like two or three times a month. I, 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 I think they make one that's gluten free, but uh, I may be wrong on this one. But, but that's that's amazing too. I'm, I see gluten free everything now. Yeah, the problem is, you know, gluten and soy free, because soy, course, soy I, turns I'm, up in everything, yeah. man. Yeah, this this does have wheat flour. Yep, it does, and. I, I now what's your how are you on because for soy I'm I'm very um uh 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 tempeh miso edamame sort of thing I, I don't I'm not a big fan of the TVP the textured soy all that really processed stuff I hardly even eat tofu how how are you on something like miso can you have okay the the thing is this um long mm -hmm. ago I was told. Because I, I was into the microbiotic thing, like when sure. I was living in New Brunswick, actually, I got into sure. microbiotic. You remember uh, Don Katina? Did you know I him? Don't, I don't, but yeah, I don't. Long yeah, it doesn't in... matter. Anyway, he, he was the one that introduced me to Michio Kuchi. Okay. And, um, uh, the thing then, the conventional wisdom was that you should only eat fermented soy. Right. Okay. And, you know, so that covers your tempeh, that covers your saitan. Tamari and... and... Yeah. yeah. I, on the other hand, since, you know, since I've been involved at the Nutritional Wellness Center, I just stay away from like all soy. Sure. Entirely. Yeah. Because, that's, that's, you know, uh, I, I don't really, I mean, I don't need it. It's like, you know, if I want to eat beans, I can eat beans. Sure. I don't have to eat edamame, which is, you know, has those compounds that are detrimental to my, my health. With different isoflavones and different. Yeah, I, I think much like wheat. I think what happens is we eat so much of something, especially in the Western world, that it just becomes uh, uh, on, on a, a poison a level. It's a poison. So I'm totally down with that. Um, I know that that's, for me, wheat. When I avoid it, I feel amazing. I did a tour with Yes two summers ago. I think I saw you on that tour, Ben. I, and I did completely grain-free. No rice, no wheat, no anything. And it was amazing. The, the great thing with Yes is there's like five vegetarians so that the <laughs> catering is incredible. You know, here's another question. It, it, tell me what you guys thought is on this. I'm just going to put it on the screen. And this is kind of a, a dramatic new thing. And we, this is the future, guys. This is happening. Um, have you seen about this? These lab-grown meats are now available. Oh, I heard about this. So, so they're now available in Singapore and Israel. If you, do all, all, four, all five of you guys know what this is? Before you, you ever know. Yeah, it's genetically know. it's genetically uh, engineered meat. It's meat made from uh, what is it? Meat stem cells or something? Well, yeah. Uh, okay, so so I, I'm not a GMO fan, and I've I've, I've studied and, and and debated about GMOs for over 30 years, kind of early on because I was at the co-op in New Brunswick, and I actually yeah. got interviewed. George Street co-op. There's a co-op. I actually got interviewed by uh, someone from Mason Gross. Is that the? Yeah, the art school. Mm -hmm. Not not Mason Gross, but whatever the agricultural one Cook. is. Cook, yeah. Cook. They were doing they were already doing research on GMOs. So I'm I'm completely against this animal uh, or plant and human animal genes swirling bullshit. Tomatoes with fish genes, wheat with other animal genes. I don't want no part of it. Having said that, I think this is just adjacent to that. It's the second thing you said. It's more it's stem cells that they put into a, a substrate in a lab and grow it so it reproduces so it's it's you know it's not natural right it's coming in a lab so let's be clear about that but it's 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 maybe not quite the, the classic gmo type situation but what's your thought in terms of is this a great idea for environmental reasons mm -hmm. what do you think would should should this be something we recommend to people i mean it's a really interesting question because if it solves the environmental problem where we're not chopping down huge amounts of forest and stuff to feed animals and do whatever it is, 
and the health ramifications are not horrible. It's an interesting thing. I, I tend not to eat meat because I feel better. Right. Like the environment is important to me, but it's more that like my impetus is because my body just responds to it significantly better. Sure. You know, so I, it's, it's a tough one. You know what I mean? Like Which I'm, I would like to say I'm against it because I think the GMOs are kind of, when it comes to the, the plants and vegetables, I think it's absurd. Right. You know, so I suppose I'd have to look into this, but by the same token, a lot of that, um, the plant-based burgers that they sell in half the restaurants, I'm not sure those are super healthy either. Well, you know what I mean? some are and some aren't. Exactly. Right. To, to Jerome's point there of the over soyification of, you know, <laughs> and everything. But, but things like the, I mean, my word, he didn't say that, but uh, I'm not putting words in his mouth, but. But I agree with mouth my words. I, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with him. I, 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 I don't look for soy products at all. But, but I, again, I, I stick with tempeh, tamari miso. But, but, but you're right. The, the things like the Impossible Burger and all that has that TVP, that very textured, very, very processed. These are this is something with five, six processing steps. You know, it, it's steamed, it's extruded, it's dried, it's recontextualized, it, it's turned into so. So we we do have to watch out for a nation eating Impossible Burgers four times a week. That's not what we want. Now there are different there are different types of Impossible Burger. Impossible sure. Burger is kind of like Kleenex now, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, and there's yeah, and 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 anyone looking around, of course, there's a million burgers that are totally clean. I like Sunshine Burgers. I like love those. Gluten free, soy free. It's mostly sunflower seeds and carrots and. Yeah, there's one that they sell at Trader Joe's in yeah. Philadelphia. Um, I mean, I, I say that because that's the only place I've ever bought them. Sure. Um, and it's it's just really cool. Uh, yep. No soy, no gluten. You know, it's all plant based. It's not hyper processed. Um, and they, it comes in two variations. Very, very nice. Uh, I love the idea of the trademarked uh, Impossible Burger. I, I think uh, the first place in Sweden to have them was this uh, Hotel Malmen. And uh, I went there with my girlfriend and, you know, we had to have, we had to try this impossible burger. Everybody was raving about it and it was really good. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I wasn't, you know, I didn't look at the ingredients first. I, I was just assured that it was purely vegan. Sure. Sure. And, so, it's and you kind of go, yeah. Yeah. I was really cool with it. Yeah. Now that being said, what, you know, when you go into the market now, and, you know, the brand Impossible Burger, I don't buy any of those because they all have soy in them. That's true, right. Yeah. The, those do. And likewise, some of these things like tofurkey sauces and stuff, yeah. they have to eat. And I just have to, even that little cough I have, that happens. I think I had like two pretzels like two days ago. I get like an immediate thing with wheat, man. It's yeah. amazing. L let's look at this. Here's another thing. Did you guys see this? This is brand new. Just was in the news last week. They're printing Steak. Three D printing steak. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah, eat an apple. I mean, Christ. You know. <laughs> what else? You know yeah. What's the point? Well, uh, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I, I see this from the angle, though, that if this will reduce the rainforest problem, then have at it. I'll never touch it. But but if someone is just their life has to have a stake in it, if if we're if we're talking that five years from now. We, we do get it through our brains that y'all want your steaks, but you got to stop cutting down the rainforest. We all need that, right? It's education, man. People, listen, people, I'm a boomer, right? And when I started school, we were taught about the food pyramid or the essential food groups, you know? Sure. And that's all just utter mythology, man. Of course. It's it was just marketing. so wrong. Yeah. And it didn't street. You know, it's like in Thailand, right? There's this dish in Thailand that I practically lived on, and it's very hard to get outside of Thailand. It's called som tam. It's a salad, okay? This is like a, a Thai staple. You can eat a som tam in the morning and be good pretty much for the whole day. And it's only, it's only vegetables, especially if you, if you skip the fish sauce and have like a, a plant-based, um, you know, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, Plant-based savory um, ingredient to it. 
instead of the fish sauce. And there, there is, you know, there is vegetarian fish sauce that's oh, totally. very common. Easy. Yeah. It's just umami. It's yeah, yeah. But the, you know, the thing is, somtam is just like it's marvelous, and your body doesn't need to eat meat. That's the worst yeah. thing you can do. In fact, the whole concept, like this, you made the analogy of uh, you know having a, a field of cows on one side and uh, an orchard on the other. Right. It's like and, and yeah. I fail. Uh, no, I do not accept the idea that primitive human beings chose to endanger their lives to hunt down an animal yeah. to go through all of the trouble to process it in order to consume it when they had everything in the earth to eat for free you know yeah. it's it's just like it's insanity this whole meat thing is it's just who said marketing you know it's it's yeah. the propaganda that that's been sold to people you know and we need to break that cycle man that's just yeah. utter nonsense well, well one of the things too is to recognize it's very american i mean we live in america and we we, 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 they eat meat all around the world. I'm not saying anything otherwise, but the, 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 the three times a day kind of just, oh my God, having it in every meal. You said it before when we've both traveled in, in Europe and, you know, I've, I've traveled a bit in Asia, mostly Japan and, and I've been in Australia, which is its own continent, but almost everywhere you go, the meat offerings are a third of the time. They just don't have it as much, but, but to, to this kind of a product though, you're completely correct. Obviously, I agree. What about that person, though, who looks at us and says, no, I'm going to eat this for the rest of my life. Uh, should, should we be happy that, that, that there's a future here where they can get this meat? Because it is meat. It's grown in the lab. It still has, you could cut it open. It's, it's still flesh. Not until we know what the long-term effects of consuming that stuff will be. Right. Well, well, but again, put put ourselves in the pace of a meat eater. Who doesn't care right now what the, the long term effects is of eating meat is? See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Already yeah. Signed I mean, off. I mean, uh, let me just like what, uh, No, you first, Benjamin. <laughs> you first. Okay. I I just want to say that <clears throat> it, it really it's a philosophical and economic imperative right now. So so for me, like. Um, all the things that we talk about from a personal standpoint regarding our food and how we consume it are, are were way more relevant in the seventies and sixties and fifties. But right now, like there's a moral imperative. Like we all know, we hear in this group, we all know there's a moral imperative because our earth is going away rapidly. It's got, it's getting to the point where it's beyond red lights flashing. Like, like Andre saying, I don't call it a, you know, there's not, it's not a cult, it's not a climate, issue it's a climate catastrophe at this point we have to start using that word like every day it's a catastrophe and so in in order to we need to take every step as humans to maintain our entire system of survival which includes meat and includes food as part of it but it's just that's all interwoven into this entire situation it's a catastrophe right now we have to look at, at whatever steps we can take to preserve our species going forward at this point, we have to get beyond people's discomfort. We have to get right to the fact of like, okay, I understand you're, you're uncomfortable. We, we tend to like try to want to hold people like, like they're going to break if we tell them they can't have their meat. But it, it, in reality, we all just have to like, go, okay, look, <laughs> real talk. Like, sure. It's like we have a five year you know, window. I mean, probably past that, realistically yeah. i mean really five years which we have to completely transform our entire way of being as a species in order to survive to really yeah. to survive on, the, on this planet and so like we we need we all need to like make leaps and bounds in our con you know our awareness and our evolution and consciousness as a, it's like so much pressure that has to it has to create results or it's pure just survival at this point yeah that's and i think uh, yeah sorry uh, sorry well, I'm just going to say, you know, and and if literally, if if everyone, like you say, Meatless Monday is the whole point of this show, is, is the entire world just didn't eat meat on Monday, we could extend that five year period by maybe six months. Yeah. You know, it's it's that one little tiny small sacrifice that we can convince everybody to do that will help us all like this, deal with a catastrophe in a very real way. So that's why I love this show, is because. Andre, you constantly bring in people. You bring in people from 
every spectrum and say, look, all it takes is for all of us, all of us to take one small step. Sure. And, and, uh, and we all as a species will benefit. And it's that simple. And we as indiv each individual will benefit, like all of us. Like our kids will have more air to breathe. They'll have cleaner water. It's so real. And so right now, and that's to me, bottom line, it's just like, as it's gotta be as inclusive as possible. So if this scary looking meat thing makes one guy eat, you know, less cow, then, you know, the, sure, why not? You know, we, we need to throw everything at the wall that sticks right now because it's a catastrophe and it's an emergency and it's time-based. We have five years. Yeah. That's yeah. Not a lot. yeah, that's no, that, that's a great that's a great uh, set of ideas there, and 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 yes, it, 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 you answer my question there it, with with just the, you know what they're going to eat meat anyway, so so you know, I, I mean I I I'm I embrace both sides because yeah, Jerome, I, I want to see more about this. I'm reading so far. What's interesting though, it is it is actual muscle tissue from a living animal so you know what i mean so it, there's nothing fake about it per se there's nothing manufactured all that they're doing is kind of the same technology we use for in vitro stuff when human beings you know we can now take an egg and a sperm and pretty much we almost not quite grow the whole human now in, in, outside the body um it, it's more that kind of thing um I mean, I think it's also a nice transition food. You know what I mean? Like when one of the things, aside from Indian food and Thai food and Mediterranean stuff, I right. would buy tofu hot dogs and tofu burgers and things like that, which made it so I could go to a cookout with my buddies and sure. not feel like a knucklehead. You sure. know what I mean? And it and that kind of stuff helped me transition right. into being help. able to do it yeah. because of the, some of the social pressure. When you go somewhere, you're, you know what I mean? Things like that. And I feel like this kind of stuff, it may not be around forever, but it's a nice transition if it gets more people to eat bioengineered meat or 3D printed meat versus, you know, stuff Smart. that had parents. Like, yeah. Right. Like, I think that it's a nice transition. It's not necessarily what I'd recommend. Right. Of course. I'm a little curious to try it. Like when they have them 3d printed fish, I'm going to, I'll be like, all right, just geez, to just, check it out. Just, just out of curiosity, the same way I listen to music. I don't like just out of curiosity. Sure. Like, oh, let's, let's, let's give this a listen and see, I would give it a shot just to taste it, <laughs> but I'm a little terrified, you know what I mean? But it could be interesting. You know what I mean? I think I think it's it's inevitable when you really when we read about the economics of what's happening. There's no choice in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. There's you we can't do the feedlots much longer. It, it's collapsing, and and so um, the other thing too, I'm sure you all have seen termites and insects for protein, right? So oh, yeah, but that's Southeast Asia. Oh yeah, they, they eat that already. <laughs> but, but but you can go to Whole Foods right now and right in the aisle with the hemp protein, the gluten. I mean the 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 whey protein and all that, you, you, you're getting, you can get termites now. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. like, wow. Powder to put a scoop in your, in your shake. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, ab absolutely nothing new there. People have eaten insects for millennia, of course. And, 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 uh, some places, whatever it's scorpions, it's beetles, it's different, but, but the Western consumption machine, um, yeah, there's actually, um, uh, uh, there's a termite uh, protein. I forget. Uh, someone sent me a link to it once, but um, you know, not for me. I'm not gonna. Would you guys do um, insect protein? I. You know what? I think anything. Like if you look at a child, mm -hmm. child's pretty game to have anything. And I think being musicians, none of us really lost the child. So I mean, <laughs> it back. Oh, it, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, Jerome? Listen, I, l l let me just tell you this, okay? okay. Um, the insect thing is really, really big in Thailand. I mean, you you know, there are like stands on the streets where they sell them. And, uh, sure. Okay. My wife, who was Thai, um, was no exception. And, you know, just eat the stuff. And I'm telling you, man, I, I couldn't kiss her afterwards, man. Wow. I just could not see those things going into her mouth and just. Well, they are earthy, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Earthy. <laughs> man, 
Have you ever seen anybody eat a beetle? There, well, you know what? I, yeah, I or have. A, scor a scorpion? Have. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, to each his own, you know, it's, yeah. it's not wrong. It's just different. And it's just totally not for me. Yeah, I, I, I agree. couldn't bring myself. No. Nah. But Andre no. did say termite protein. So to me, it could be yeah. ground up like whey powder. And I don't know. Looks yeah. like whey powder. <laughs> well, what is it about? Um, there, there's some food dye that's very common that's made out of the oh, yeah, sure. the red, right? Yeah, yeah. cochineal, or, or, or it, it's a few. It, it's in hard candies and things like, like vegetarian yeah. M and M's and things. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to avoid that, and, and it shows up. Um, and, and certain gums, chewing gums, mm -hmm. you have this. So you got to watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Those gums usually say vegetarian, but they have insect in them. I'm with you, Jerome. I, I just don't. Yeah, it's just. I'm, not. There's always when when plants stop growing on planet Earth, the shit is over anyway. But you know, but, but <laughs> well, I, I'll just keep finding. Now, I'll right? just keep finding another uh, arugula or a dandelion uh, bunch. Here's 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 a, a little thing on it. Yeah, the, so there's roasted grasshoppers. You get them in Mexico like crazy. Mm -hmm. They eat caterpillars in some parts of Africa. Oh. So termites are the big ones. Oh. Yeah, termites are really big. And um, I know. Ben at, at Whole Foods or one of those stores, someone showed me they bought some in San Francisco. Termite powder. It just, and it, it just looks like just looks like pea protein or hemp protein. What is, what is this other one that's it's also very big in, in um, Southeast Asia? It's their larvae from okay. um, some flying insect. Okay. There's an okay. English word for it. I forget what it's called, but it's it's just, you know, no. Yeah, gross, gross. <laughs> not, not my thing, man, but I get it. People are, but you know, in a strict environmentalist way, which, which Ben, you know, to your point, I got to go, hey, that's fine. Because if they can harvest and grow termites now, right, at this insane level, and you do it in a sustainable way, they're, they're using rotting wood or whatever, then I'm like, okay, here's 10 years from now. This is what's interesting, folks, because we don't have a choice. We cannot keep <laughs> cutting the rainforest down, right? We can't. These, 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 these hog farms in America where the pools spill over. You guys have read about this, right? It's everywhere in America. We have these hog farms. Hog farms in particular are incredibly toxic. And, and every time that, now we're getting more and more floods in America all around, right? Extreme weather. Look at Texas. And what you're seeing, I bet you, I bet if we looked it up in Texas, the nightmare of their animal slaughter industry under all this stuff, I'm sure it's insane because the of the blackout. Time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, but what I'm saying is that's horrible. We could sit here for three more hours just talking about the horrors of the Texas animal slaughter industry, right? Mm -hmm. Let's agree. Uh, uh, what I'm positing is if you went and looked it up, what has happened to that industry in the past 10 days is probably going to blow our mind, right? Because the power is out. The, and who's going to suffer? These animals and, and the quality and everything, right? So um, it, it's, we've got to stop it. And yeah, it's just, it's a holocaust. I mean, I, I know that future generations will look back on, on this era of human history in you know, in just utter amazement that the that this brutality and this this cruelty was was just so commonplace for so many generations. That's just that's like mental illness, man. That's no. insanity. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that long view, man. And what's beautiful is you read like Leonardo da Vinci and Ben Franklin, yeah, vegetarians, and they said some things like that. They said, "Wow, how can this be going on? We're, we're making." Uh, I forget who said it. Someone said, we're making graves of our bodies. This is hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, look, obviously, we're heading in the right direction. The fact that, um, you know, everything we're talking about here, how it's changed in our lifetimes, amazing, right? I mean, yeah. when we were 17, 18, the stuff was there, but you really had to go like a... Greasy Tonys, man. <laughs> Gracious, <laughs> that's right. Were, were you able to find a veg uh, thing there? I, I never, I never ate at Greasy Tony's. I went there millions yeah. of times with with friends. Uh, right. Never ate because you know I I didn't eat red meat from the time I was sixteen, sure. and sure. you know there just wasn't anything to eat there. Yeah. It was just a hangout, you know.
it's it's funny one of these days this whole thing and, and thank you guys for being part of this and giving some of your time on a monday this is a great hang just some of my great friends just chilling but but i this is a return for me and some of you that know me back in the 80s i was starting down this journalism and rock writing and all this i wrote for the the targum right everyone knows yeah. the targum. targum. i wrote for the um the livingston medium you know, I, I had a, a cover story on Gil Scott Heron in, in 1985, you know. So, so this whole thing is like I'm turning the clock back. But one of the things I did in the, in the um, Targum, and I got to put it up one day, they gave me the middle pages, like the two pages. You could put it up on your wall. Um, this was in 1986 or something. I did a thing called A Vegetarian Guide to New Brunswick. No way. Yes. I have, I, 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 you'll oh, see that wow. in the coming weeks. I just got to go through some boxes and find it. Um, here, I found one of the articles. But it's, um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and I, I remember I had, I had the Chinese restaurant, and I kind of went through the things you could eat in a Chinese restaurant, the sesame noodles and this and that. And I had the co-op, and I had, there was a falafel place in town. It wasn't my moons. So I had kind of, you know, I, I look back, and I'm like, Wow. You little bastard! You had this kind of figured out at at age twenty. You know, um, uh, oh, there was a place called Pockets over in Pockets. Highland Park. I remember Pockets. Pockets. Yeah, in yeah that was Park. nice. And, and it was, and and that was when they were calling it pocket bread. It was a pita bread. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you can get it stuffed with hummus and different things. And then there was Jerusalem Pizza right across the yes. street in Highland Park. Almost and, all. And the food train. truck. What, what that food truck that um, what was yeah. that called again? Uh, it, it I. Was, I I think I mentioned them, right? Because they had a yeah. couple of vegan kind of. So, yeah. so anyway, the the point is, um, I, back then I was thinking of it as like, here's a guide, here's a survival guide if you <laughs> try to do this. And here we are, where it's actually it's possible. So I'm gonna post that someday. Yeah, here's um, you can't really make it out, but there's my cover story. Wow. 1985. Good for you. How about that? And I interviewed him. So this was a preview of the show. And then I interviewed him, and then days later, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I had a, an, inter an interview published. I want to show one, one more video here, uh, unless uh, Antar's got a link to some. Any of you guys have a music link, but, but here, here's something fun that celebrates one of the coolest places we all know growing up around New York. We're standing in front of one of my personal favorites. My husband and I have been eating this for I don't even know how many years. This is literally Mamoon's falafels brought here to our studio. <laughs> uh -huh. This whole team has been just turning it out Kena, of millions there he is. of falafels for us today. <laughs> our whole studio audience is going to get this sandwich. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is, it is a, a iconic New York uh, place. It's delicious. And I cannot tell you how many things I've eaten over the years. <laughs> it's been torture. Sitting back there smelling this and not being able to come out of a falafel. Know. I'm like, oh, let me out. It's so good. But what, what makes Mamoon's falafel so different? Well, basically, it's a traditional recipe. My father started the business in uh, 1971. And wow. he used an old school recipe that his mom gave him. And we've been, we haven't changed the recipe. We uh, pride ourselves on having it consistently done the right way 100% of the time to 100% standards. We use the freshest ingredients and the highest quality. And the falafels are green. Like, they're so dense with herbs and flavor. Yeah. It's just, it's the best falafel I've ever had, period, on Thank the planet. Thank you very planet. much. Look at that. It's amazing. You have fed us so many, so many late nights. <laughs> Look at that. But, you know, um, show of hands, right? Everyone's had a Mamoun's falafel at some point. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it's a ritual. But, but you know, I always want to encourage people, the Mediterranean diet, right? Go, You keep hearing about it, which is cool, right? Time Magazine, this one, that one. They always bring it up. And we laugh, right, us five, because we're like, Finally, you get it. You know, <laughs> we've been trying to say fat isn't bad. Trans fats aren't so great. You want to have more omega threes. You want to bring down the nines. You want to just read about fat, folks. Eat some olives. Eat some avocados. Eat some coconut if if that's a good one for you. Eat this show's making me really hungry, Andre. <laughs> eat some nuts. You know, but, but but the Mediterranean diet, right, guys? Uh, you know. Yeah. Just, Andre, I think the shameful part of 
this whole discussion is our grandparents weren't going through this because they harvested their own meat. They harvested their own vegetables. Yes. They had well water that wasn't polluted now, you know, because it was before the war and before mass um, uh, industry. And You're right. They, and that's what screwed everything up. And now it's like, okay, man, we got the TV. You got to have something in front of the TV. Here's TV dinner. Yeah, it's convenient. You want convenience, right? Yeah. So with all of that being said, if you just go back to what your grandparents did, kind of make sure your soil's good, make sure your water's not tainted, grow your own food, go to a local person who's raising livestock, a local person, and who will slaughter it. And there you have your, your old school. Yeah. I mean, if we just went back to that, if everybody just did that, didn't buy from the four major corporations that right. the numbers food, would everything would start to write itself because Mother Earth is very good at that. There's but, only there's only one fly in that ointment. And this okay. is the, the elephant in the room that, you know, we've not addressed. And that's the fossil fuel industry, because believe it or not, a lot of this is driven by the fossil fuel industry because, you know, transporting those meat products cross country in trucks, that's not being done because it's the most efficient way to transport anything. It's money. It's all about no. money. Fuel. The fossil fuel industry is just somebody's cash cow. And okay. until that's broken, we're all in trouble. No, you raise a great point. And yeah. I kind of no. You both raise great points, and and kind of anyone who sees this show here and there, you know, I mention every week the local idea. I'm yeah. always saying, I'm always saying to people, I'm always saying, if you're gonna eat chickens, if you're gonna eat lambs, I mean, I, I let's talk about it because let's these are sentient beings. But 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 okay, okay, if, if that's just not happening, can you just try to find it locally, like Joe was saying. Can you and also like you're saying, Jerome? Because then you're cutting off driving it from fucking California. What the hell is that? Texas. In Texas, insane. And and likewise, our lettuce and our parsley and everything else. That's why. So last year we grew two types of parsley. We had lettuce, but not much of it. Just maybe two harvests. Whatever we grew: garlic, scallions, potatoes. Let me tell you guys, we only got these little ones. But when you eat potatoes that you just picked. 12 feet away wow i couldn't believe how they tasted yeah it was surreal i mean everyone knows tomatoes taste but peppers all that but I'm, I'm telling you there's something about the potato the, the the gap between like the potatoes you had i we couldn't believe it so so i encourage everyone every week if you can you got a little space a little window still even um and to your point get the fossil fuels out of your relationship with some percentage of your food yeah yeah well that's that's the whole, i mean that that circles around to again everything tied into that one um s overall system of survival right now it's all part of that same thing i mean thank god we have leadership that we do right now that recognizes the situation gives me more hope i've slept better a hell of a lot better since january 20th um but that change but I mean, seriously though, like yeah, fuel. The, all these systems—they all work together to support the the rapid implosion that we're experiencing now. Uh, and so, God, yeah. I mean, I, I, I the the hopeful part of it is you guys, us, we leaders, gentlemen, who have you know are doing leading by example, showing happy, healthy lives. Sure. So all, ultimately, that's the only thing that's going to change things. Sure, exactly. Meeting happiness and health and leading by example and having our friends look at us and go, dang, you look great. Like, I mean, I'm so glad that Antar came on just then uh, on the screen because look at this guy. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you Jesus, dude, you look like 47 years old. Oh. He's, he's going backwards. He's going backwards. Yeah. Um, but I see the same thing in you, Andre. I look at your skin. I look at your eyes. Well, like, the, gray you know, hair, the gray hair fools people. That's what puts yeah, it over. But, I mean, but if you dyed your hair, you would look like you were in your mid thirties. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> well, thanks, you man. Know what well, I mean? well, what's funny? We haven't even talked about this. There was a there was a minute when I was like thirty pounds lighter, and and my hair was uh, 
still black, and I had dreads, and you had dreads. We had some funny yeah. times because you had a goatee. Yeah. I had a goatee. And we're, folks, we were pretty. Right. Cool. And at one point, use us and oh, all the time, all the time, people would come up and be halfway in a conversation. There was just about two years where we were just. Right. Going up. <laughs> and um, and the funny part, I sold you a bicycle once. Remember? You did. Or I I told you. And then, you, right? You people would yeah. see you and think of, hey, Andre, and it was yeah. like. Absolutely. But, but then you kept not aging, and that's the. I, I kind of, <laughs> what about Carmine Rojas, huh? Oh, dude! You know, I, I, we didn't get to uh, do the rest of his interview. I'll, I'll do the rest of it next week. It's just, it's just a, a tape. But there's a great example, um, and, and our base brother Carmine Rojas, who um, he started doing this ten years ago, and and again he's defied the laws of a lot of stuff. <laughs> And shown that uh, you know um, you could turn back the clock and cl clean up some some health issues. You know, um, it, it's really incredible. No, th this is uh, we're going to wrap up, but um, uh, you know the, the the base thing just fell into my lap, and then I started thinking about people like uh, Geezer Butler or, or um, Paul McCartney, right? Two vegetarian bass players. Did you, know, did you know Geezer was vegan? I'm very he was a big hero of mine. So yeah, really, yeah. That cool? that's interesting. And, and for a minute there, when Bill Ward has his, had his heart attack, everyone in Sabbath was vegetarian for a while. I, mm -hmm. I, I cracked up when I read that. I was like, here's the most hardcore, you know, <laughs> the, the, the tough guy biker band. And, and they had to find out, yeah, your heroes are saying no to animals. Some of them have switched out of that. And some of them is because of health issues. Um, Bill Ward had a heart attack, and so he went that way. Um, but but Geezer, he if you Google it, there's interviews. He's like, no, haven't eaten it since I was a child, you know. And and you know, so so there's a bass player thing because you guys are you're solid, you're low to the ground, and ready to go. No, I'm serious. There's something. Uh, Melvin Gibbs, the yeah. great Melvin Gibbs. Um, I think uh, I think Lifetime vegetarian. I, I, I might be wrong on that, but but. In my crazy mind, I'm making it all fit. And I'm going, yeah, you guys are the foundation, <laughs> holding shit together. Uh, Tony Levin, you know, um, he's a he's a pescatarian, but 40, 50 years, never touching it. So um, I'm gonna say there's a connection because <laughs> players Must get be. it. You may be right. Base players get it. You know. Thank you for bringing <laughs> the connection together, Mister Andre. Yeah, Absolutely, man. guys. Um, you know. Yeah. We Hey, I just want to shout out to all all you guys. It's a pleasure, you know, re seeing some of you again and and spending this time. You know, yeah, it's been such a great, great great time. Great to know all of you and, and share your music. Your music, all of your music, is very inspiring. I'm looking forward to diving into a lot more of it. Yeah. So it's uh, been a great honor for me to hang out with all of you guys. And yeah, and man. Ben, is there is there a site for you, Ben, or or, or Instagram, or what's the, how can people fo follow yeah. you? Yeah. Well, I have I have a company called Ohm Sonics. O H M. S O N I X, Ohm Sonics. That's all my composer thing, which is every kind of everything falls under that. So, a Facebook forward slash Ohm Sonics. Okay. I, uh -huh. I, put, I, I put up little pieces of music for that I work on, and look out soon because I'm currently uh, redoing one of Andre and I's songs from uh, back in '86. A song sure. called, called Shishka, which was because it was dedicated to our drummer whose name was Bob, and that just kind of reflects still, on our sense of humor there uh shish kebab so anyway yeah it's going to be posting up on on that spot soon so you can hear a, a you know a, a rhythm method redo and hopefully andre will put some guitar on that soon so keep your eyes well, up for that. the other thing to what ben said about Oops. um okay something happened with the facebook feed but anyway uh, hopefully it came back um yeah, so the, the, no, we have some music that we're going to work on. We're going to pull that together. I see, I see ohmsonics.com. Okay, um, Brian Chapman, Benjamin Davis, that one? Yeah, that's it, although that's kind of defunct. I would go to Facebook forward slash ohmsonics. Okay, so people can yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, find put that into the chat. Okay, and uh, all of you are on Facebook, so people can find you. I, I've put yeah. – um, uh, uh, <clears throat> Put that up. One, one here's a, here's another cool thing, uh, Jerome. This great picture with you. Oh yeah, uh, that's that was the uh, original. <laughs> yeah. It is, huh? Wow. 
Wow, that's epic. That's Ronnie. Yeah. Chris. The great Frank Lacey who changed my life, man. I saw that shit. It really did. I, I never heard anything like that. And it's funny because years after hearing that, I heard Fishbone, and they had that kind of combination of funk, <laughs> rock, and horns. But Frank was doing it. Um, oh, look at that. I, I didn't realize I commented on this. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, when, that um, was a couple of years ago, right? Yes, that's right. I, I, I didn't realize I commented two years ago. I said, yeah. I can't wait to see this. So I, I, I knew the name was familiar, Burridge. Um, and then Ben Watson, who wrote that. Yeah, uh, Ben Watson was my favorite journalist at The Wire. Oh, that's great. He's a good friend. Yeah, he he's wrote, fantastic. He wrote The Negative Dialectics of Poodle Pet Play. There book, you go. A very <laughs> short, um, a book on Zappa. But there you go, folks. You can find uh, Jerome. You can find, um, uh, uh, as Ben said, um, Ohm Sonics on here. And Antar. Is that, uh, is that Corey Rawls? Do you know Corey Roll? Oh, he's playing with Frank Lacey. I see. And what's his face? Josh David? Oh, I know a bunch of those cats. You know, that's, that's the beauty of this show, I must say. It gives me gifts every time because of those connections. And, yeah. you know, we, um, yeah, it's. <laughs> Wait, is that the Omsonics Facebook page? Yeah, yeah that, that was it. Cool. Yeah, that, I wrote that uh, a little, we, I did Christmas. I have this Christmas group that I do with my old friend Jim Fernandez, who's a sick guy. I have to shout out, musician, incredibly talented guy. So we do a Christmas project every. It's cow punk Christmas music. Cow it's, punk Christmas. Cool. Yeah, it's it's actually really really fun and amazing. His sense of humor is awesome. So check that that out if you if you go down there. It's pretty funny. It's not in season right now, but still something to look forward to. I guess. I put the um, Ben Studio and Production site up there. Om Sonics and. Uh, people can, because you know, people follow up. That's what I love. And, and, and yeah, you can find all these musicians. Very cool. Um, and um, okay, looks like we're. Dude, that was tricky seeing you like inside the chat, inside your page. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's definitely meta. Something very meta going on right there. I don't know what it yeah. is, but. Well, you know, and then the the thing froze. There's there's Daniel Gibson who. <clears throat> friend of ours another plant-based guy um and, and again we welcome people who are whatever your diet is again i'll say it every day just just try to cut back a little bit you know just try to just a little bit just just a yeah tiny little bit yeah Small. andre antar benjamin and jerome i must say i have heard all of you play today and that was quite a treat for me so i really quite appreciated your talents so Yes. Yeah, when do we when do we get to see you do your thing? I know. Never. never I'm hiding. I can't <laughs> play. I've just been buying the instruments and faking it for all these years. Uh -huh. How come I can't find how a, I doubt that. How come I can't find a Parrot Beach? Uh, um, was well, this you at the Crane Park Gazebo? Oh, probably in West Caldwell, Florham Park, New Jersey. <laughs> maybe it, it says it says. September. It's just. Did you play in September in West Caldwell, or somewhere? I think we did. Okay, so l let's get a a quick. Ooh, who uh, knows what we're gonna see? Well, uh, yeah, this is it. It's a cell phone thing. So. That's a tight oh, band. Man.
that's great, man. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. no, the tight band, even for an iPhone kind of a, a, a shot there, you could hear everything. And I, I didn't realize it's full on, man. The shirts, the whole look. Oh, dude, you know what? Do you know Jay Didimo? Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's Drummer. playing the drums. That was him? That was Jay. I didn't realize. Antar's laughing. What, you know, Jay? I do. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. 22 years. Small world. Oh, he's been in that band? I didn't know that. Living on the, no, not Jay. I mean, oh. Jay's got in the band. Our drummer moved to Florida, actually. Okay. So Jay kind of helped us out. The pandemic helped us out because Jay wasn't working as much. Right. So he knew our lead singer because he had been a big fan of a band called Godspeed that the lead singer oh, yeah. belonged to back in the day. I remember and, that. Um, and the little thing. Actually, the other thing to. Sorry. My actually, my lead singer, his brother is Jeff Seitz, who was Stuart Copeland's tech throughout the life of the police. <laughs> so that's Gary Seitz. Him and his brother Jeff were in a band called Godspeed before the police came along in 1980 and took Jeff away. Right. So a little story. story. We, we should we should be writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are digitally. In a way, we are. Yeah, in a way, we we, we are. Well, gentlemen, let's wrap. But I mean, yeah, thank man. you for being here. Good stuff, man. Thanks thank for having you. us all on, man. It's really great, man. It's really fun. It was very organic, and it literally, uh, I, I pictured that it would be this cool hang. And I love that everyone got to, to, to know each other, and um, some for the first time, yeah, yeah, yeah. some haven't seen each other in 20 years. And you and, and yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. what's amazing. We all have connections, whether it's Kirk Miller, the sound guy at the court, or Dave LaRue, or, <laughs> you know. Or, 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 oh, my God. <laughs> Kirk Miller. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sorry, you turned me on to those court tavern tapes. I did, I did, and, and, and by the way, folks, um, uh, um, and Jerome, you're probably on one of these uh, upcoming things. So Kirk recorded every single show going back to when he started mixing there, which is in the late '80s, I believe, and he, he and and every time he's moved over the years. Uh, that move is probably 80% milk crates filled with cassettes, dats, <laughs> and a few wow. mini cassettes. Yeah, yeah. And so he, he's, he's the archivist. And now on lockdown, he lives in Colorado, he's been doing this incredible project where he's been just taking um, uh, uh, all of the um, cassettes and everything and, 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 and digitizing them. Yeah. And putting him on SoundCloud, yeah, and he's got this thing. Um, uh, I think it's it's past a hundred by now, but he's just going through and putting all the great um, bands that we grew up with. And um, I'll I'll put his wow. link here. But he's got was Tiny it? Lights just came up. The Latin Jazz Connection. The y. Was, that the, was that the stretch track that you that you said? Probably, me? yeah, exactly. The Stell, a couple of my bands, The Bouncing Souls, New Breed with Melvin. Stumbling oh. Way, remember Stumbling Way? The Mad Daddies, uh, Massive Chunk of Vaporhead, Robin Renee, one of her solo shows. This Look, is on SoundCloud uh, right now? Yes, Mark Bradley, who sadly passed away. Oh, Precious I'm Wax. Go to SoundCloud. SNA, Sharif and Aurora, who also sadly passed away. Oh, man, I might have played on some of those games Dude, with them. This is insane. The Raging wow. Nude Swirl. Who remembers Nude Swirl? Oh, yeah. How about the Wooden Soldiers? Show you all about, the time. How about uh, Jerome? You brought this one of these names up Paul Reeder and Adam Bernstein. Hmm. Oh, it, it just goes on and on and on. So, so, so Kirk's doing like this. Uh, it's that's this is our this is our 20s, man. You know, uh, <laughs> it, it's I just put it into the um, into the uh, Facebook chat, Antar, and and I'll um, oh, wow. It, it, is yeah, he, yeah. he is he EQing and and producing them or is he just like putting them up straight up from tape, you know? Oh, from tape. I mean, he, he's I don't know what cleanup job he's doing, but n not much apparently. He's just got audacity and he just. Yeah, I heard some of those tracks and they sounded pretty good and they also sounded quite archival. So right, All right. I don't think he's he's. Well, what band did you hear? Was it Machine Gun or something or some other? No, group? I well, I heard a whole bunch of stuff. Like I came across the site. And just listen to a bunch of stuff. But like I said, Smithereens, Crossfire Choir, Mad Daddies, um, 
uh, frozen concentrate, oh, tiny okay. lights. You know, there was, it was, I just kind of went down the list and, and just start, you know, just clicked on ones that just, Random. yeah, you know, ones I remembered. Um, it was very, very little stuff that I hadn't heard of that I listened to. There's sure. some pigs and pigs. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's great. So you've yeah. been down the rabbit hole. And Bob Muso has a huge rabbit hole somewhere, too, if you go to Muso Music, right? Yeah, Muso Music all is these, impressive. All, all these shows. So um, awesome. Well, well, that's a good that's a good place to end with some music. Um, guys, we'll talk soon. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, man. I look forward to it. I'll be safe. Yeah. I'm looking forward Indeed. to hearing more music from all of you. Absolutely. Yeah, stay out of trouble as much as you can. And, and and let's do this again in a couple months. Absolutely. Yeah, let's right, definitely, let's do, definitely this do this. Definitely do this. This is I would love team. that. And get <laughs> Bob and get Dave Larue. Yes, yes. I, yeah. I, I spoke to Dave uh, about a month ago, but uh, just about some gig possibilities in a year from now. But yeah, I, I, I as we've discussed, I got to reach out and catch well, up. I do, Bob. I do chat to Dave. I I chat with him a couple of times a year, so I can definitely put it out there. I'm sure um, he'd be game too. Yeah, no, let's get him. I, look, I interviewed Andy West two weeks ago, so yeah. I got other bass player from the tracks, right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. When I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god, look who Andrew's Andre's got on now!" It's like and Andy West. <laughs> Andy, um, I know Andy, um, Andy and Henry Kaiser. Andy, Andy's become a good friend over the years because he lives in Phoenix, where uh -huh. um, yeah, and 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 he's he loves music. So I've had the pleasure of of having him. Uh, I always put him on the guest list, and he comes down and hangs. And it, it's it's fun because. He comes down and he's freaking out because it's Adrian Ballou or it's Percy Jones. Mm -hmm. and he's he's such a fan of music that, you know, he's uh, and still doing new music himself. So so let's get you know. Here's here's a bit of trivia that I Please. actually wanted to sit in on that that uh, show and oh. bring this up. Um, Henry Kaiser was originally supposed to be in the band that I went with uh, to Iran. Oh wow! He was actually in the band. He was on the tour, and he had some passport processing problems, and as a result, couldn't make it. Wow, interesting. Yeah. yeah. See, see, that's interesting because Henry Kaiser, if people don't know, he's 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 from a, a family of industrialists and stuff. So I, I bet the Iranians were like, "No, this guy built the boats." <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing there. I don't know, but I could see Henry. Um, he's been all around the world. And and I know in some of those countries, if you've been to certain other places, they, they so. yeah, like you can't get in if you've been if you have a, a Israeli entry stamp, can't get into Iran. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's true, and 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 vice versa. Um, if you've uh, yes, I've been to um, Israel, and the drummer had been all around the Middle East, and um, you know, uh, uh, they gave they gave him a lot of shit. They let him in finally, but. Um, well, that's pretty cool. You almost you almost played with. Uh, did you play with Henry at some other point? No, that's the other sad thing because uh, you know I played with Reeves Brells a lot. Sure. And he and Henry are tight. He, Henry, and Tronzo. You know. Okay. And, yeah, I always wanted to get together with with both Tronzo and Henry because Reeves just like constantly had great things to say about them. And um, another one was David Torn. I always wanted to play with David Torn. Oh, well, there's still time. And, and yeah, there's still time. David's a good friend. You saw the chat I did with David, and yeah, I did actually see that. Yeah, I didn't see the whole thing. Sure. Um, but yeah, um, he's still one of my heroes. You know, you're reminding me. Then I think I saw. Did you guys do Reeves Gabrels? You and Lance Carter. That's right. Oh, yeah, man. Doom Dogs. That was wow. my band, Doom oh, Dogs. I did see that. Wow. wow. How much do we meet Lance? What a yeah, that yeah, was man. tragic. Very yeah. sad. I, yeah, I, man. Yeah. I, I did a thing. This, do you all know who Daniel Carter is? No relation? Yes. Yeah. This circle is crazy. I just had like a three-hour conversation with Daniel Carter the other night. Oh, that was a short conversation. With I know. <laughs> with him. Right, right. Like at, at, at like, you know, we, we, we hung up at two in the morning. But yeah. what an amazing guy. And, and uh, there's tapes of Carter, Carter, Chumley. So we did something. Uh -huh. But I remember that. Doom Dogs. Doom Dogs. Um, I, I know. We, have, we actually have a record out. Doom Dogs. Yeah, um, Lance is on some of it, and Bill Bryant is on some okay, of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I probably have that. Yeah, on. it's called it's called uh, 
personal nuclear device. It's actually it's on Musical <laughs> Music. Yeah, it's available I did. on Musical Music. Yeah. I, I did get that. I, I know we're gonna go, but I want to. I want to hang with a. One, I'm gonna end with a one minute commercial. I'm gonna show you guys that um, is is pretty cool and and just just takes it full circle on the food thing. Um, let's see. And this is going back to Israel, but um, in a different way. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Take the leash. I'm sorry, I'm taking a leash. Great. Isn't that great? Cool? Uh, Brilliant. I um so so uh, we'll end it there, but but what's interesting, I went down this rabbit hole. There's an explosion in Israel of animal rights. Because we, we always hear about Israel and people, it's the government and the negativity. Let's boycott. I, I never get that. Israeli people are amazing. I've been to Tel Aviv, had some of the best food I ever had. But there's this huge movement going on. Um, and, and that's, uh, I forgot to connect this before. I meant to. That's why I wanted to wrap it up. Th that that one of those lab grown meats is coming from Israel because again they're going look you got to stop killing animals if you're gonna eat it then you know and people are checking it out but 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 besides that there's this vegan explosion over there and uh, you know, animal rights groups and connecting it with peace and anti nuclear and putting it all into one and there's even an Arab Israeli thing going on there's this company that goes back like 25 years. And it's it's a, a Jewish guy and an Islamic guy, and they make food. Well, and so it's uh, it, Andre. I just got to put one more plug out because sure. luminary, luminaries. We traveled to Israel and Palestine and played on both sides of the border, and um, you know, introduced kids on both sides to positive hip hop. Had book kids on both sides singing "Peace Worldwide" starts from inside. There you go. So. I mean, we, we, you know, I've seen it with my own eyes. It's yeah. It can be done. There can be bridging. But we came back. We took a lot of footage, and we're making a documentary about it now. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, but oh, great. The one thing I, the one thing I always wanted to, 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 I wanted to call it the hip hop and hummus tour, because <laughs> it's the two things that, that it's the two things that both sides absolutely love and, and and you cannot be mad at someone if you're dancing and eating hummus that's you just can't, you just can't. That's pretty good no yeah, that, that's uh, i i feel on, you know you're right I, i'm hopeful if everyone gets a nice big thing of hummus put some, some quality hip-hop starts dancing together it'll solve the world's problems that's my that's my solution right there i i love it but i would say hummus is one of my other go-to's because you uh -oh. can make it with a blender like you can make it in Make it to taste in five, six minutes. It's the best. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's um, so good. It's <laughs> such an open palate. Exactly. You look in the fridge. Oh, I have some pickles. Let's let's try that in there. Or hot pepper, yeah. or you know, yeah. ham, cherry oh. tomatoes. No, it, it's true. Yeah. Well, let's end on that note. Hip hop, hummus, yeah, and world man. peace. And <laughs> we will do this again, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, man. It's nice hey, to meet guys. you guys all. Fantastic. Yeah, man. This is great. Right. Well, see you guys. Everybody. Yeah, man. Thanks for being here.